Okay, John, you said you have a duplicate of Torchlight? Yes, I have tor I have two Torchlight 2 cards. Okay, you should give me one. The duplicates I have, which you're going to get regardless. But, or, like, do you care about cards? I, I don't know anything about them. Like, I, That's how little time I spend on Steam. Okay, I'll explain cards to you, because t turns out everyone doesn't know a ton about it. And I didn't know either until... Yeah, they've, they've started leaning into it real hard lately. So, the way the way it works is, before the Steam sale, uh, there was a few games, like a dozen or two, that um, when you played them, you would get random item drops, which were these cards. And if you click, got enough of the cards from one set, so all the ones for one game, you could craft them into a badge... And the badge literally is one of those things that just sits on your profile. And what it unlocks you is bigger friends lists or backgrounds. What? Yeah. It's not great, and it also levels up your Steam profile. Again, who cares? Also, you can sell them for money? You can sell them. And when you when they were first being sold, they were getting sold for like a 2 $3. But if you look at the spike now, like $0.20 cents a card might be going for. Yeah, unless you got so. a foil Witcher 2 card, 4 bucks, yo. Some pe yeah, foil cards know. are more. I don't really know what foil cards do because they're rare. Anyway, so once the Steam I, I sale started, just the idea. you get a whole bunch of cards now just for voting. And if every time you spend um, ten dollars, it doesn't have to be at once. It's just every time you you pass ten dollars spent, you'll get another card. And if oh, you can get shit. all the Steam sale cards, you can craft that badge. Again, pretty useless, but I'm getting kind of really close, so I figured I might as well do it. How many do you need for the summer badge? Because I got a bunch. I'm looking at it now. You, there are. To... There's there are ten. Twelve, yeah, ten. There's okay, ten, I think... and I currently have six of them. And so the way you can check this, for people who don't know, is when you go to the homepage on Steam. As soon as Steam loads up, better for me. Why? Is okay, I have game? eight of the. You yeah. have eight of the ten. Eight of the ten, but tons of dupes of a bunch of them. So right. So on the main Steam page, you click Find Out How underneath the summer get getaway badge is right at the top. Then click View Your Progress. It'll show you the ones you have and the ones you're missing, and it'll also show you which friends have the ones you need. So you guys should help me out, because I need Chivalry, Football, Prison, and Torchlight 2. Well, I can hook you up with Torchlight. Okay, I got okay. Prison Architect. Okay, so the only duplicate I have, so I can only really trade with one of you guys, because I yeah. don't think you can give away, and I'm not buying them off you. Okay. Because that's you not going to sure, happen. Sean? Because this Football Manager one is the only one I got, so... As soon as my inventory loads up, I'll tell you which duplicate I have. Because I only have one duplicate. I, I could use a football manager. I have uh, Chivalry, I have Skyrim, Tomb Raider, and two Torchlights. Okay, so I have two Dead Island Riptides. Okay, so do I. So... John, do you need Dead Island Riptide? Yes. Okay, perfect. This is great. Okay, so now Live if I go to my friends list, and John, are you online? I am loading up Steam right now. This is like the most exciting way to open our podcast. Yeah. Hey, this Explain is at least video game system. related. Also, we can debate whether this is even a good thing or, like, achievements, but way stupider. Cause... This is not a good thing, and it is achievements, but way stupider. Because you're not even getting them for doing anything. It's just you you played enough game, so here's some cards. Right, and they're but... not tied to... And he... Okay, so here's the real crazy thing. You can only get, like, a max of, like, three drops per game. And yeah. then you need to play the game longer to unlock more drops so that more random drops will happen. Mm -hmm. So not only are you waiting on unlocking drops, but then you're waiting on the drops to actually go through. And you're and hoping someone else on your friends list is playing Alan Wake, for example, so you can actually get it, but nobody is. So but what you can do, and what a lot of people apparently are doing, is they just turn on the game and leave their computer, like, <laughs> just put it in the background. Yeah. So it's te technically being played and just dropping every, like, few hours or whatever. <laughs> that's so silly. But like, that, here's that's the like... real crazy thing. You yep. apparently it for each game you can't get all the cards. You have to trade with people. Right. It is forcing you to like engage with the game community thing. And I'm assuming it's this weird way for Valve to kind of get people to encourage other friends to buy more games. And then there you go. So it's like you should buy Alan Wake, Sean. You should play it a bunch on PC. I almost bought it because I really like that game. Yeah, but, it's okay. like three all bucks. Right. So John's online. We're we're starting to trade. My, okay, how do this you would do work this? better for her video. Step one, select an inventory that you can trade. Steam. No, we're painting word pictures. Everyone Community. knows what's going okay, on. Okay, John, I have selected my Dead Island one. There's my... Oh, there we go. There's my offering. And there's... Well, I thought I... Oh, I gotta drag. That makes more sense. Yeah, you gotta drag it. Wait. Wait, can you give me two things for one? 
Probably. I, I can give you as many by the looks of you it. You should give me all the ones I need. That all I have, or that's the only duplicate I have. Well, do you care? Give well, me what, your cards. Well, <laughs> okay, what ones this do you getting need? Weird. This I, is getting I have sh- now. I have chivalry, I chivalry, Skyrim, and Tomb Raider. I need chivalry and Torchlight Two, Football Manager, and Prison Architect. Well, I can. I'll give you my chivalry one as well. All right. Do you Making have an, that's, the o- All right. that's the only duplicate you have, right? That's the only duplicate I have. Right. I, I, w- I would Raider. give you all the duplicates in the world, John. All right, make trade. Digital cards. I love how there's digital foil cards, so they're rare digital files that exist on the internet. Like, are there summer digi- foils? I, I don't know. I don't have any. Okay. There you go. Also, yeah, funny by the was. number of cards I have, I think I've spent like a hundred bucks maybe on the Steam sale. Well, you also so get you said it's uh, every trading $10? cards for voting every three votes. Oh, okay. So every three times you do a vote for one of the discounts, you get a uh, a, tr- a card. Because I haven't spent that much, and like I said, I had six of them already. Sweet, I got your cards. This was the best. Yeah. <laughs> now I can put a sweet background on my profile. <sighs> what? Congra- congratulations. Yeah. Okay. And isn't this and the friends cap is like two fifty, so right. that's not Which, really I don't have two hundred and fifty friends anywhere on any like you could probably take all my social networks and I yeah. wouldn't hit two fifty. Yeah. John though. John needs the uh, upgraded friend cap. So in actuality I should be giving you all my cards. Yes, sure. Do you want <laughs> I don't know cards, what my, John, my I, can... I don't know what my friends list is at right now overall. How do you even check that? So in the bottom right of Steam it says view friends list? Yeah. And then you, there's a big list of all your friends. There's no like actual count. I actually um, have to physically count it myself. I have a count of how many are online. Yeah, I don't have an actual count. Maybe what? actually... If you open your profile page, it should say that. Um, well, I like am. Just oh, yeah, on no. Your... If you go to your your name at the top and then the do- drop down to friends, it'll tell you. Okay, so I yeah, have, I'm have. i pretty sure I have the lowest Steam friends list because I haven't updated it, I don't think. 330. Oh, right. Also, Steam, like, levels matter now, sort of, right? Because you can't even do this unless you're a specific level. I don't know. Yeah, I'm I'm level 5, so... I'm level 9, so we're we're good, but uh, Brittany's profile was level 3, and she's not allowed to have cards. I'm 6. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, so they, like, force you to play more games before you can even play with the big kids, Well, I I think there's something where, once you level up, Steam will actually give you, like, here's a 50% off coupon to use whenever. Okay. So you actually might get something out of this? No, this seems to be paving the way for like a more comprehensive system of doing stuff and rewards for customers and whatever, but it's it's weird, man. I don't know. I'm right, get, you craft them into badges too, right? Well, that's like, the whole thing, and then they sit on your profile, kind of like how you have like the, I have 250 games badge. So like, I'm like an Alan Wake master, clearly, or at least I know people who like it. Weird. Anyway, so hey, hey, Steam, Steam, Steam's a video game. Yeah, which is what All we right. talk about here on the Steam, top-down Steam perspective. Steam is a giant video game, basically. Yeah, well, it's kind of becoming into it. They're gamifying Steam. It's weird. Well, that's a good way to get. I have a level in Steam. My Steam is level six. My, I have job. a level five Steam. There you go. Exactly. You so can, you can beat me in a Steam fight. We could. Steam engines. I, I've been doing a lot of junk with Steam this week. It's been crazy. It's almost well, you know what? I'm the host this week, Sean Booker, and I'm joined with John Wheeler yep. yeah. and Nathan Rohr. Hi. Today is the 18th of July. Yeah. So, Nathan, why don't you start us off by telling us what you've been buying? Okay. Um. Here, let me just look at the... It's easier to look at the list. Oh, God, how do you do that? Um... We can look at Friends Activity. Oh, no, no, I, least... I, I think I found it. Yeah, there we go. I found it. We're Wait, can, yep. is there... Oh, there we go. Activity right there. Let me just look from the top here. Okay, yeah. So, John, I saw what you like just purchased. So. Yeah. Okay. I got. I got my list. I'm good. Okay. Um, Call of War as Gunslinger. All right. That's, that's one of them. Uh, da, da, da. Like, there's some I've installed, some I haven't. So, Dark Souls Prepared to Die Edition. Um. You got Rage, Pixel Dis- Junk Eden. Yeah, Dishonored, Devil May Dead Cry, Island, Riptide, or no, Game of the Year Edition. Euro Truck Simulator 2. Are you getting Riptide? <laughs> really? What? Are you no, get I've heard Euro Truck Simulator is amazing, so I'm really curious about that game. I, I watched the quick look, and it, it's driving a truck. Yeah, it's driving a truck. I, I've never driven a big truck, so now I'll know what it's like. Not only to do that, but to do it in Europe. 
That's exciting to me. I don't know. I don't have a driver. We worry about you. Why don't you just drive a real truck? Maybe I will. Guitar I'll Hero. See. I'll see. I'll, I'll see if I'm interested. Uh, Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. Um, oh. Devil May Cry. Yeah, Devil May Cry. Uh, Rage, as you mentioned. Rogue Legacy, which was... I think it's just the launch sale, kind of, but it's sort of in there. Rock of Ages, Dishonored. Oh, I did buy Rock of Ages. That's right. <laughs> that was like $2. And I know it's by the Xenoclash dude, so that was enough to sort of be something I'd do. Um, Sur- Surgeon Simulator, The Swapper, um, Tomb Raider, and The Witcher 2. I think that's all so far. Doesn't sound like that many, right? What do you say that's like way that? more than I have. Okay. I've been going However, a little I have nuts. a big wish list that I'm just kind of checking off, and then if nothing happens, I'll just buy them on the last day. Yeah, I've been kind of keeping an eye on some stuff, too, that I'm hoping goes on sale, but it might not. Like, I think Prison Architect's supposed to, but I don't know. So What makes you think it's, like, supposed to? The, d- Are you hearing pe- rumors? Okay, there's been, like, yeah, conspiracy people. Like, if you look at the main page right now, there's these weird little emblems, like, it's on a map on the background. And people are like, wait a minute, this symbol here is actually from Prison Architect, so maybe that means it's going to be on sale. And, like, this one here is from Torchlight. This is the gate in the cutscene, or whatever. Like, people are, like, looking at that, trying to figure out. And then there's, like, a stack of postcards on the main sale page, and you can kind of drag one of those images into a browser, and then you'll know what's going to be the next featured item. So there's ways to kind of look ahead a little bit. But, yeah. And then I just, I don't know, I still have a big wish list that just kept getting bigger. Like, it started at, like, 30, then it went down to, like, 15, and now it's at, like, 20-something again. Because I was like, wait, I I want more things. It kind of gets you in this weird gaming zone. I've been playing a lot of them too, though. But we don't need to talk about that yet if you don't want to. John, what have you been buying? Uh, I'm trying to be a little reserved, but I guess I've bought more games on Steam than I have ever here. So You were buying quite a bit. Let's see, I picked up La Milana, uh, System Shock 2, nice. Gun- okay. Gunpoint. Yeah, I have Gunpoint. FTL, Faster Than Light. RPG Maker VX Ace. <laughs> okay. You know, you no, know, I, I use the VX, so this was a good time to upgrade. Cause oh, it was right, like, like for the trivia game thing, right? Yeah, so this is like 60% off or something crazy. So it was like 20 bucks. This was a, instead of like 70, so it was a good deal. Yeah, okay. I said, Nathan, I saw on your wish list, you have like iOS Game Maker, which is Hell $200. Yeah. I know. What if it goes on sale, though, Sean? What if? Sure. That's a it, good way to hasn't. track it, I guess. Yeah, like just keep an eye on that. I'm not expecting that to go down, but whatever. Oh, it's not. A, it's a, you never know. So yeah, uh, Surgeon Simulator, Oregon Trail Director's Cut, and SimCity 4 Deluxe. Oregon Trail is pretty good. But yeah, oh, like SimCity 4. I only have one game on my wish list right now, I think, and that's Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition. Mm-hmm. And that's currently on sale for 15, but I literally just bought that on 360 because it was also on sale there for half okay. off. Okay. Okay. So it's like, eh, I don't want to buy on two separate systems the same day. Plus, isn't there a new edition of Street Ultra Fighter Street 4? Fighter 4. Ult- Ultra's not out till next year. Oh, okay. And there's no guarantee of a PC version yet, so... Right, okay, never mind then. Silly me. Yeah, a friend was like, yeah, I only play Street Fighter on PC now, so if you want to play, you gotta get it on Steam. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Alright. Fighting That's it games. for me. Cool. I haven't bought much, um... Antichamber, Trine. Uh, oh, let me look at my list. Trine one or Trine two? Sorry, Trine two. Okay. Um, <clears throat> FTL. I picked up Gunpoint. I'm keeping an eye on. Actually, I think that was it. Speed. That's all I've. Wow, I, well, I'm not gonna lie. I've only been to buying them when they're on the super sales. Like I said, I have a bunch on my list list that I'll be picking up at the end. Right. Okay. Like. I don't know. There's some that I'm just like, I don't think this is going to go lower than this. Like, uh, Pixel Junk. Like, I saw that was on your list too, but it's like 250 I don't know if it's going to go further south. With all the that. other games I can play, I can afford to wait. Yeah, fair enough. So, yeah. Fair enough. So that's how I've kind of been looking into that. But, and, like, um, th- that Walking Dead DLC is totally not, right? Because it just came out. But right. But I'm, I'm right. still, it's just sitting there. It's just like, I'll buy it at $5 no matter what, but hey, if they want to be super crazy. Don't you want to buy it on your the system you played through the game on? I played it on PC. So. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, I'm hoping the Steam like cloud save thing works out for that, or I'll have to put it on my old laptop. But whatever, that'll work too, I guess. It ran okay on there. All right, Nathan, why don't you tell us what you've actually been playing? I'm playing a lot of games. I'm gonna try to not spend too much time, Sounds like good. exhausting all of that. But hey, played some Animal Crossing. Well, let's talk um, all about that. Yeah, yeah. So the the night bugs, that's the way to go. At the same yeah. time, though, it now just feels like this weird nightly chore I have to do, and it's right. weird. But, like, at the same time, there's so much stuff you need to pay for that it doesn't feel quite like breaking the game, because it's like, no, I'm working. I'm working real hard. Like, this is this is tasks right here. And I've upgraded my house, like, twice since then, um, and paid off the Dream Suite, which I haven't used. Okay. But, um, yeah, that game just has infinite things for you to buy. Uh, but I guess it's still going okay. I got Wario's hat, so that's pretty cool. There you go. Yeah. Speaking of Wario, Game and Wario. You played it? Yeah, I played it. Was I right? That. I like it a lot, but I, I think I've kind of exhausted a lot of it already, which kind of bums me out, but that's okay. I, I mean, I had some fun. Um, the, the one where you're playing and the mom is creeping around is probably the best. That, that's that your is, favorite one? That's my favorite one. Okay. Just because, like, at its core, you're playing WarioWare, but then the TV is spying on you, and it's weird. So I, I thought the that mom's was, like, like a... breaking your window open? Yeah, and then, like, the the gamer one, like, the last tier of it, she gets crazy. Like, she just sneaks up right next to you, and then falls asleep right next to you, and it's horrifying. I haven't even seen that, but that's, that's it's incredible. It's the worst. Yeah, because, like, it's just, like, there's so little indication that she's going to wake up. Like, I guess it's, like, the anime thing where there's a bubble. So if it pops, then you gotta hide. But oh, okay. it, it was absolutely like just jumping out of your seat, crazy, scary. It was it was pretty amazing. Um, what did, did you? I liked the um the one where you're the taxi shooting stuff. Oh okay, I only played that one once. I but... really, I just, I really like that opening cutscene, and then it just switches to death metal. Yeah, no, the cutscene with Dribble and Spitz was pretty good, and it's just like they they have a bazooka for some reason, and they gotta fight aliens. And I I don't know that that one was okay. I I found myself just looking at the the like uh, TV though. Like I would just drive based on that. Yeah, yeah, that's what I did. Because like I mean, and it has except the first when you're shooting, view. right? Yeah, yeah, except when you're yeah. shooting. But yeah. whenever I'd just be navigating around, getting treasures and stars and stuff, I would just look at the TV. But have you have you jumped into any of the like bonus unlockable content? A little bit. Um, there was like a mysterious cookie that just has mice eating it forever. And you can chase them away. Um, I'm trying to think what other stuff there was. Like there, it, it was kind of reminding me of the weird objects you unlock in Work Time Fun, which is a positive association for me. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm trying to. A, a lot of the more tips though, like a lot of the stuff I was unlocking was like gameplay hints. Yeah, some a lot of them are tips, but I don't or know. character just profiles some really good ones, and stuff. Like when you can phone someone. And just yeah, I did do on. one phone call. That was kind of weird. So I I don't know. Like I'll I'll still unlock more stuff and whatever, um, get more coins. But yeah, like I I did all of the like I played eighteen volts games. I did all of that too. So I got all the WarioWare content out of there, and now it's just those mini games. And I don't know, they're good too. But I just like WarioWare. So that's probably why that one was kind of my favorite. But I don't know. I still feel good about it. Like forty dollar price tag and all that. Get some. Nintendo coins. Oh yeah, the golds and elite stuff happened. Did you guys make it? Yeah, uh, I actually Club put Nintendo? myself right up to like twenty coins underneath platinum, and it's like I'll come back to this, and then it ended. Oh Ooh. gross. Okay. Yeah, so I was like, oh crap. I'll be honest, the platinum gifts not that good. This what year. is it? I haven't seen them. Uh, platinum gifts are a three pack of posters: one for yeah. Pikmin three, one for I think Wind Waker HD, and one for Year of Luigi. Okay. Oh. And uh, the Majora's Mask soundtrack CD. Yeah, that That's was the gold. one I was like, well, I, I'd get that, and then I was only gold, so I don't get that. I was What's platinum, gold? and I picked the posters. Okay. Um, uh, gold had the usual calendar, and then I think like five stuff. different games. Yeah, it was oh, like wait, Link's Awakening. games? Digital Link's games. Awakening DX. Uh, there was a WarioWare Do-It-Yourself Showcase. Yeah, that was the Wii, U, that was the Wii WarioWare game. Well, that was the, no, the Wii Wario game was making yourself. No, 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 the Wii eShop game. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, no, there was a weird do-it-yourself app thing that. You yeah, there was a weird, there was like a DS. A channel. Well, do WarioWare do-it-yourself, and that was the Wii pairing with it. 
Okay, so that's what that's for. Yeah, there was also a Smash Bros. 64, uh, Mario Land, and I want to say there was one more game, but I think we might have hit them all. These sound, like, way better than the Platinum Prize. Kind of, well, yeah. I would but, rather I mean, games But these are also games posters. that you could get for, like, 150 coins whenever they I know, they're sale, like, they're just so. digital games, so I, I was kind of like, man, I want a physical thing, like a tote bag or something. I, I just went for the posters. Yeah. I, I like posters, that's... but I've filled my room with posters. Oh, well. Anyway, so, yeah, that that's Game of Wario. I'm, I'm still having fun with it. We've done some of the multiplayer stuff. I kind of wish there was more to the robot one, because I like the drawing stuff and the way it's calculating. Right. But I think there's only, like, two things. It's, like, do the main thing or do it without, uh, with one try. Like, yeah, so the you kind of have to one, commit yeah. to the stuff you're drawing. And, it, like, and, it, and that, that is calculating is... angles and lengths and stuff. Is and cool. the stuff you were drawing is always the same, which kind of sucks. Yeah, it's just like draw draw a thirty five degree angle or whatever. And you're just like, okay, do do the triangle, okay. Like it's just pretty, like it's cool once, but I kind of wish there was more. Um, right. But yeah, I don't know. That that game's pretty crazy. Uh, then I got onto the Steam stuff. Um, Surgeon Simulator is, I guess, like a three dollar joke, kind of. If you right. get it on sale, like it's just like, hey, the physics are broken, ha ha ha, and then that's that's kind of the game. Like I, I don't know if there's really much more to do beyond fight the physics in that game and actually do an operation poorly. But do you, did you guys try this game? I've seen it. Yeah, yeah I've seen it in action. It. I picked it up. So yeah. yeah, like I just wanted to like maybe it's like you watch it and you're just like, okay, well whoever's playing this must just be bad at it. And then you try it and you're just like, no, the controls are just jacked. Like it's just the way that game plays is funky. So. I don't know. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I mean, it was like a three dollar purchase, so I'm not too burned by it. But I, it's weird how high a profile that game has, considering it's not functional, basically. I don't, okay. I don't know. Yeah. Um. Th- then I had a really bad first impression with The Witcher Two, but I might fight through that because maybe it's just a bad like a uh, tutorial or something. But I think I've heard that the beginning is not the best. Yeah, like, I, I don't know. I I was like, alright, let's jump in. I've heard this is, like, deep role-playing games, some Skyrim-type business, let's do this. And, man, th- that game is just kind of really clunky at explaining all of its stuff. Like, not in that it's, like, hard to figure out, it's just a giant block of text interrupts you, like, every two seconds. And it's just like, alright, now that you've, you know, gone to this menu, hey, read this. And then it's like, okay, press this button to do this, and you're just like, I don't know. It was a really, really bad way to introduce me to that game. Um, I might go back and revisit it, but it was it kind of put me right off. And I was just like, I just want something satisfying right now. So then I started playing Call of War as Gunslinger, which I thought was great. Um, I don't, I don't know. Have you guys played the other Call of War as games? I haven't played a single one. Okay, don't worry about hey, those. Hang on. Yeah. There was a Nintendo Direct today. What? Yeah, what? no, it was literally just announcing that Earthbound is now on the Virtual Console. Yeah. No, I've been seeing that pop up on Twitter. Um, and how much is that? Ten bucks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. It's, it's been better a than long... paying 150 for the cartridge. Sure. Yeah. I've seen that thing go for a lot of money at conventions and stuff, so... Ten bucks. Now we can all play it. Mother is back for the people. Um. Anyway... Don't worry about the other Call of War games. Basically, this is the best one. Based on me playing like two hours of the first and second one, this one was the most fun by far. Um, it's a $15 downloadable thing. I think it's been like $11, $10 during the Steam sale. Uh, it's also on Xbox and PlayStation as well. Um, yeah, it's just... I think my favorite thing about the way it plays is the way they do the storytelling is kind of... So, like the Prince of Persia type thing where he's telling his own story okay. is kind of and then he's what's like, happening. Hang on, I got something wrong. You know, let me fix that. What? What? No, that's what I'm saying. What they do is like, oh, wait, I got something wrong. Let me just re re repeat that part of the story and then oh, go back to this. Yeah, like he'll die or something. And it's just like, so obviously I didn't go in the mine that way. And then you just kind of start over. Like it'll rewind back. But that you're repeating stuff d- didn't really bother me that much because it's kind of recontextualizing everything. Or like you'll start fighting a bunch of dudes and then he'll like someone who he's telling the story to will be like, wait a minute, there were a hundred guys? And he's just like, well, I don't know, but there was a lot. And then, you know, there'll be like slightly less guys or whatever. Or it's like 
um, you, wait, you were fighting Indians? I thought they were, like, this gang. And he's like, oh, that's right, never mind. Uh, they were actually these gangsters. And then all the Indians will disappear, and it'll become just, like, dudes in cowboy hats. Like, it'll it'll just kind of rework what you're seeing based on this sort of senile drunk narrator telling you what's going on, which I was totally amused by. It was pretty funny. And it also, it was a great way to kind of tell the player what to do because the guy is recollecting what he did. So it's just like, oh, yeah, then I disarmed all the dynamite that was on the bridge. And you're just like, oh, okay, so I'm supposed to disarm the dynamite. And then you kind of do that. So you're kind of hitting your marks in a lot of ways, but... The actual core combat of it's pretty stylish and fun, too. It's pretty conventional shooter stuff, but they kind of do this pulpy novel type thing. Like, if you get shot, it'll be like a hole punch through a page, and if you get shot up a bunch, it'll be a bunch of torn up tears through the screen and whatever, because this is his recollections of what happened, but he's also countering dime store novel takes on his adventures. So, like, I don't know. The way they factor in the look in, of that game and all the narration and writing and stuff with the framing narrative, I thought was really, really clever, and I thought it was uh, pretty pretty fantastic for that. Super ridiculous, bloody, like, arcade shooter in a lot of ways, but it figured out a way to kind of just do that honestly and in a kind of humorous way. So, I, I don't know. I was really impressed by it. I played through the whole thing um, in, like, two, three sessions, maybe? It's, like, six six hours, maybe. There's some bonus modes, too. But, um, yeah, for for something I was not paying attention to at all that just kind of came out, I was pretty happy with it. Um, although, I think maybe playing that kind of put me in a weird state for playing Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon, which I played a little bit of, just because it's also, like, a comedic shooter, and I just played one of those. So, I don't know. I I I like the music okay. I like how the dudes in the cutscenes just kind of slide around without animations. Um, but I've only done like one or two missions in that. I guess I was getting kind of annoyed with like the same thing I was having some issues with with Far Cry Three in general was the leaving the mission area thing that happens. Like, oh I'm yeah, no worried. that that messed me up a bit in uh, Blood Dragon. Yeah, like, I'm just like, well, I'm just trying to, like, figure, go around and shoot stuff, and they're just like, yeah, but you you really need to be over here to throw the heart so the dragon goes here, and you're just like, really? Okay. I mean, kind of just wanted to shoot the robot guys, but whatever. Um, There's Predator jokes, a Terminator-type feel to that. The tutorial thing was more interesting than I looked watching it, because it actually constrains everything you can do until you do it. And then right. it starts mocking you horribly. The number of times you have to skip through boxes, though, was crazy. Like, really, though, like, honestly, it was like a parody of the Witcher tutorial I just played. <laughs> like, because it is the exact same kind of, like, way too many boxes of stuff explaining, like, your five was happening in the Witcher unironically. And that just, like, really, I don't know. I, I, People have said enough really cool things about that game. I want to get back and like fight through the rough early goings and see what people are getting on about. But man, that that was not the way to start things. Um, hey, have you guys heard about Rogue Legacy? Should I get into what that's all about? I've heard about it. Tell me more. Hey, wait, I'm just, wait, wait. This one makes quick me thing. curious. Yeah. yeah what? One quick thing. Yeah. So I'm just on, I'm just reading on Twitter. Supergiant Games is streaming Bastion um, for their two year anniversary. Okay. Which, so it came out two years ago in Summer of Arcade. So that means normally Summer of Arcade would be going on right now. Mm-hmm. Is it going on? Like, what's up with that? I know, uh, I know Summer of Arcade goes through, like, the first week of August. They had games last year. Give me oh, a second. I'm just I'll... looking it up. It starts August this year, August 7th. That's late. Oh, okay. yeah. So they just bumped it back. Yeah, the, no, yes. there's four games lined up. It's just, I don't know. Right, no, actually, I had seen these games. But, yeah, that's late. I wonder what's going on. Okay. They um, might have just delayed it because of, like... Steam Summer Sale. Maybe. It's entirely possible. Our, our spotlight got stolen. Although, as far as I'm aware of, neither of these games are on Steam. Neither of the games? Yeah, they won't, because they're always exclusives first, but yeah. still, maybe just because they know people are going to be spending all their money on Steam. Mm-hmm. I don't anyway, know. sorry, you were going to talk about Rogue Legacy. Yes, um... I think John might specifically enjoy this game. It is... Yeah, I've been hearing that a lot. T- okay. Tell me more. It it is kind of reminding me of Castlevania, but okay. also with a certain amount of ghosts and goblins type not 
high fidelity of control, but that's fine. Like, mainly the animations. Like, you're just this dude in this big clunky armor, and you have to go on an adventure in this crazy castle. The castle will always kind of randomly generate wh how it's, like, organized, but there'll be some constants that you kind of have to suss out by going through it over and over. Um, however, each time you die, your dude is gone, and you play one of their children. So you kind of have this long family legacy thing that kind of happens just by playing it a bunch. Like, I've lost so many dudes. And, and ladies. Like, just so many people are dying because I'm not getting through this castle. Uh, but that's kind of part of the thing. You, you level up by improving your family line and, like, buying better stuff for your family castle. So it kind of has this long legacy thing that builds up, hence the name, I guess. Um, I guess it's the people who made that Don't Shit Your Pants game. Really, of all games? Yeah. Like, it's cellar door games what is or that? something. I, don't even, I haven't heard of that game. It's that... literally an adventure game where you have to learn not to shit your pants. You have, like, yeah. two minutes before you shit your pants. So you have to figure out how to not do that. It kind of got around on the internet, like, a couple years ago. Was, yeah, I, I, I played it. It's like a Flash game or something. But you, you basically just need to kind of stealthily get to the bathroom in time. And it's it was super dumb, but... There's some humor like that, like one of the traits you guys can have is irritable bowel, irritable bowel syndrome, which basically just means they fart every so often um, when you jump. But there's also just weird like traits that can happen, like your guy can be nearsighted or farsighted, which just makes parts of the screen blurry. Or your like the worst one was dude had vertigo, so everything was upside down. And backwards, so it's just like, don't ever choose that guy. Like, it's okay, really... this sounds pretty amazing, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, and the actual way the gameplay works out is straight up just Castlevania style, like, jumping around, hacking monsters and stuff, and collecting gold, but you kind of have to be, like, really careful, because it's got that rogue-type element to it, where you will lose all your stuff, but, so you at least want to get enough gold to help the family, or unlock some stuff that will permanently improve your guys. So it's like, hey, you got this awesome helmet. That is good. Your like your your subsequent children and stuff can use that helmet. So yeah, and a bunch of the abilities and stuff are very reminiscent of Castlevania. Like you got vampirism, so you're getting health every time you fight a guy. Your sub weapons are basically Castlevania, like throwing axes and daggers and stuff. Um, I've put about three hours into it so far. I'm I'm definitely enjoying what I've been playing. I only beaten one boss successfully so there's still a lot more to it but yeah that combination of like spelunky randomization but with like castlevania combat mechanics is pretty pretty sweet how how much was it on sale when you got it or did was it even on sale i was like 12 bucks it's 15 regular so yeah i'm looking at right now it's 12 dollars 20 percent off i think I'll, i'm gonna pick it up yeah it's been 12 bucks the whole you, nathan sale. you just sold a copy yeah no it's it's been pretty pretty cool game so far um so yeah that that's been kind of like in the background of a lot of stuff, like, you can put in a run or two in Rogue Legacy every so often, so around the same time, I was also playing the new Devil May Cry game, uh, which I played okay. a little bit more... Well, I played all... Of, uh, that was all yesterday. I played that up game is through, stylish. It is stylish. Um, Looks pretty nice on this computer I'm playing it on. Uh, g Yeah, got a... You know... What, what, what to say about it? Th there's stuff written all over, weird words prompting me to go stuff go different places. I do like how the stages kind of stretch and change. Yeah, I was going to say, limbo. that's my favorite part, is just this hallway is now just longer. Yeah, or you're in this weird soda warehouse, and then now there's weird platforms in the air. Did, you, did you play everywhere. Alice Madness Returns? Uh, I've Yeah, a little so, bit. Are you seeing kind of similarities in, like, level sort of. structure theme? In, like, the demented architecture stuff. Sort of, specifically, when you enter to smash one of those chain things. Like, yeah, that's just because it's, like, it's brighter and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, when Dante's looking to his past or whatever and recollecting stuff, there's some kind of really weird... It, that and, like, some Bayonetta-type stuff, which sort of makes sense, because they're both sure. kind of hyper-weird action games. Uh, but no, I've, I've been generally enjoying it so far. Like, the combat mechanics seem pretty smooth, like the left trigger, right trigger things to trigger your sub-weapons and whatever. Um, right. Is, right. There's yep. no targeting in this one? Is that true? Yes. Okay. That was one of my big, one of my gripes with it. Yeah. Like, I've, I've definitely sort of noticed that. It seems to kind of auto-target certain dudes, but it's like, I really want to just pull that dude's shield, so 
I need to kill this guy first or something. Like, there's been a few little hiccups here and there, but generally, I don't know. Like, for one of those weird action games, I'm having a pretty good time with it. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm just playing normal difficulty, so nothing too intense on that. But yeah, I don't know. Just been bouncing from game to game to game, but there's been a few that have stuck more than others. Um, and yeah, more more to come in the next week. Like, uh, maybe maybe I'll play Dishonored or Deus Ex or something. I don't know. We'll see. You have to finish Blood Dragon because that final mission is so good. Okay, I'll I'll go back to Blood Dragon. It's just like I had just been shooting guys and stuff. Like it's something about it. I my favorite thing I've seen so far is that bow has like lights on it and it just looks cool. Yeah, that, that that's, have you read the description for it? No. The description is pretty funny. It's literally saying, like, this is a bow. Like, what do you expect? Like, the only reason, like, this is a future bow. That's why we put neon on it. Yeah, but the neon makes all the difference because it makes, it, it would not help you in any situation, like stealth or hunting, but it just looks really cool. And that's kind of, yeah, like, the game looks really cool, and that's, that's, that's fun. That's nice. And I've, I've been bobbing my head to a few of the songs. There's been some good stuff in there. But, um, yeah, I haven't gotten too far, though, so it hasn't opened up really yet. It was, it still felt kind of constrained in a way. Um, All I'm saying is, like, if you're getting tired of it, just don't do side quests and just do the story missions. Okay. So, yeah. All right. John, what have you been playing? I've been playing Deadpool. You finished it yet? Yes, you mentioned, uh, yeah, that no. you it regretted I I mode. realized why I was having issues with Deadpool when I was playing it last week. And that's because when you're fighting guys with guns, Deadpool doesn't flinch when he takes damage. So yeah. the only mark you have of you taking damage while you're doing anything else is that your health meter will be slowly draining in the top left corner. And uh, you'll finally get like an on-screen visualization of that when you have about, I think, 30 health left. And at that point, one or two more bullets will kill you anyway, so... That sounds like a bad thing. Yeah, and I don't know if that's just because I'm on hard, or just, like, a proper design decision. Because, like, uh, it always happened when I was in, like, uh, melee combats with other people. There'd be, like, one guy in the background shooting me, but he wouldn't be missing, and I would just die from that. None of the guys, like, attacking me would be fine. That was the thing I couldn't understand. It's like all the melee combat was good. Like you could always you can counter any melee. Com- it feels a lot like the Batman kind of combat system mixed with like a Dynasty Warriors style combo. Mm-hmm. But the gun guys would always like completely ruin everything for me. So it okay. became like this, just kind of this job of just like, okay, now I have to make sure I always take out the gun guys first, then I can focus on the melee guys. But because I'm not attacking the melee guys, they're chasing me around, so I have to keep jumping and dodging around, dealing with the gun guys, then I can deal with the melee guys. But some melee guys, if you get too far away from them, will pull out their guns and start shooting you then, too. Hmm. Have so I don't know if it's... Have there noteworthy jokes or set pieces? Or... Uh, there's, there's been a lot of pretty good set pieces. Okay. Uh, that's I think that's actually kind of the key bit of this game, is that the set pieces are pretty funny. Or, like, entertaining. Okay. So, hmm. Deadpool. Deadpool, yeah. I don't know. I, I will still finish it, uh, but if you're going to play that game, probably don't play it on hard. Okay. Or if you do play it on hard, I mean, I get ready for some frustration. Uh, other than that, I've been playing more Project... Uh, yeah. yeah, if you're going to get it, get it cheap. Okay. Yeah, so we'll hold off for next next Steam sale on that one. Just exactly. Wait yeah. a year. Uh, I've also been playing more Project Cross Zone. Right. I'm, okay. I don't think I'm that much farther, and I think I said I was doing like one a day, and I more or less kept to that. Um, I'm at the point where missions, where chapters will take 40 plus minutes now. Hmm. Okay. So, unfortunately, like it takes a while to get through, So, and I, I learned the hard way that uh, you need to be really careful playing that game, because in certain missions, if one specific unit gets killed, you immediately fail. Oh, it's just like this is a story character or something? Or... Kind of, yeah. But like they'll change up who that character is per mission. Fun. So there was the last mission I was on, uh, I couldn't let uh, the guys from Virtual Fighter get killed. And I accidentally did when I had about maybe four units left to kill, so I had to start all over again. And that, and that was going through like 40 plus units. Okay. So I learned the heart. I learned, thankfully, that next run that there's a quick save feature in the game. That doesn't work like the uh, the Fire Emblem method. Mm-hmm. 
Like most most strategy games, when they have a quick save feature, it literally just kicks you back to the title screen, and it only works until you load that file. Right. In Cross Zone, it literally is a quick save that you can load at any time. So, so it's just a save file. Yeah. Okay. So I, I can make that save and then load up back in the fight at any point. So I'm just going to start doing that from here on out so I don't accidentally screw myself over and have to restart an entire mission. Oh, so you're just going to start like kind of inching your way through the missions? No, it's more going to be like, okay, I've killed enough units at this point that the big twist of this chapter will show up, so I'll save now in case I screw up. Right, right. Because the way, like, the game is still super formulaic. Like, it'll be like, okay, here's a bunch of units. Oh, they're all dead or close to dead. Here's another 20 units with a boss character. But now this character that's going to join my party just showed up. Or they'll show up at the beginning of the chapter and it'll go on like that. Right. So every chapter is literally give me a new pair of units to work with. Okay. I don't know. I'm still having fun, but now it's starting to get towards like the, the monotonous point. So now I can see why people were not giving it like full 10 out of 10s. They were giving it more like eh, 6 out of 10. Okay. But you're going to finish it, or...? Uh, I'll keep going on it. Like I said, I've been playing... If I just keep playing casually one mission per day, I will, I will probably finish it. Right. Uh, I have also been playing Street Pass. I have I read about this. I'm very interested. Okay, so Street Pass added four new games to the 3DS. And you have to buy them? Yes. Which is why I'm not playing it. Uh, yeah, yeah I picked get... them up, I think. You, you get a deal if you buy all of them, right? Yeah, if uh, it's five dollars per game, unless you buy all four, then it's just fifteen. So you you get one free basically. Right. Um, also, if you bought Shin Megami Tensei four and uh, Fire Emblem Awakening and put them on Club Nintendo, you get a thirty dollar coupon for Club for uh, the eShop, so you can use that to buy it. That's I know a bunch of people who did that. I got an Wait, email that about coupon? that, but I got the coupon. Yeah. I didn't get the coupon. You type both codes into uh, Club Nintendo. Oh, you need both of them? Yeah. Oh, okay. Then I, that's why I did not get the coupon. I, I was going to say, one. you probably didn't get Shimigami. Right. Did you at least get the email and said, hey, since you have this, you should buy this one? No. Because I got that email, and I don't know why, because I don't own either game. But, yeah. Oh. Nintendo huh. was like, hey, man, you love that Fire Emblem. We know you do. You should buy Shimigami Tensei. I was like, I don't. I like, might have what? unsubscribed from their newsletter, though. Oh, I have, okay. I don't think I've read their newsletter in a while. It's probably a good idea. <laughs> I just keep yeah. getting those. I don't know. Every now and then, it's like, oh, I didn't know that. Cool. That's that's the opposite. Every now and then, it's... Well, actually, sorry. Every single time, it's like, oh, I already knew that because I read game sites. Thanks. Right. Anyway. Like, if I get one about Earthbound, it'll be like, well, yeah, I Twitter told me that. So, yep. thanks. But, okay. Coupons. Anyway, yeah. What are the four mi- games? So the four games are, and I'm gonna look this, bring, open this up here, so I can double check the names. They are Me Force, which is a spaceship shooter. Nice. Okay. Uh, Flower Town, which is a gardening simulator. <laughs> that sounds interesting. Warrior's Way, which is like a giant uh, army games crossed with rock paper scissors. Okay. okay. And Monster Manor, which is a. Uh, Puzzle RPG. So are, are these like are they are they all more deep than the? They usual... are fully fleshed out games. Oh okay. Like you you would recommend the purchase? Um, I would recommend the majority of them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I'm trying to see. I'll, I'll go in. I'll try to describe them as much as I can. Me Force. Uh, however many characters you street pass, they will show up as pods in your spaceship stage, and whatever color they are, they'll dictate what weapon they are on your spaceship. So you've got four slots for uh, attacking on your ship. You've got three on the front and one on the back. But you can rotate the pods around however you want with the triggers. But, like, if you put more pods where, like, you have a... Let's say I have, like, a a black me on front. That gives me a saw blade. If I put another me behind him, that saw blade becomes more powerful. Okay. So your street passes can upgrade your weapons as well. So you dictate that. And there's, like, uh, 15 stages to go through. And so is it hats you get again, or...? Here's, okay, they changed the way it works this time. Here's how you get new hats. Uh, in each of these games, there's specific achievements you can get, and these achievements will give you vouchers. Now, these vouchers, you just go to the main Street Pass Plaza, and you spend these vouchers on whatever hats they decide to sell that day. Okay. So, let's Did see. Did they yes- add more hats? Yeah, they added okay. 90-something hats. 
Okay, cool. And apparently there's costumes now, too. Like, uh, yesterday's selection was a Donkey Kong costume. So you have the Donkey Kong head, and, like, your me body becomes, like, a monkey, and you have the DK tie on and everything. There's cool. also a, a okay. Diddy Kong hat, a barrel hat, and a palm tree. And in about uh, 20 minutes, they'll be throwing up some more. How often are they putting stuff up? Daily. Like, is it once a day, or...? one uh, Once a day, like, at, yeah, 1230 our time, at least, oh, okay. that I've noticed. They'll be like, okay, new hats, and however many vouchers you have, you can pick them up, and you can pick and choose. Now, I, do you know I, if this is something I can see if I don't have them? Like, if I street pass with you, am I going to see cool costumes that I can only wish I had? I believe as long as your street pass is properly updated, okay. yes. All right. So if your street pass has the new plaza, you'll you'll know it's completely different when you see it. Then, yes, you should be able to see it. Like, right now, I'm wearing, like, a chic mask. Okay. So, like, uh, a lot of the new costumes are actually pretty cool. Uh, they also added five new puzzles for Puzzle Swap. But is that with the purchase? or is No, it just... that is for free. And everyone can have the Puzzle Swap pieces as usual. Okay. But yeah, you have to buy the other minigames. Uh, let's see, what else we have here? Flower Town. You are trying to grow a garden and become the master gardener. So you have to raise all these different types of flowers. You have to try to raise 20 different types. But meanwhile, you're also doing uh, jobs for people in town. You're also, like, meeting people and trying to make new seeds and that. It's surprisingly in-depth for what was just be a gardening simulator. What does, like, street passing add to that, though? Street passing uh, helps you grow your garden. Like, every person you street pass will water your plant and help it grow. Oh, okay. So they're just your slaves. Yeah. And once they're in bloom, like, they'll bring their flowers and, like, they'll, they'll pollinate and create seeds for you to make more flowers. So me's are, like, bees... Yeah. Me, but B spelt with two I's, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. Uh, let's see. Warrior's Way. Um, you street pass people based, and based on how many people they've met, that many people will join your army in an attempt to take over the world. That sounds like that could get big fast. E- kinda. Uh, when it started me off, because I had met 3,000 people, like my plaza population is 3,000, so they're like, here's 3,000 troops. And then I'd street pass people like, oh, this guy's street pass 27 people, so here's 27 troops. <laughs> right, so I need to street pass with you to get 3,000 people added. Yeah, but also, if the person owns the game, they may end up challenging you instead. Okay. So, like, you'll meet them, and they'll, they'll say, like, how big their army is. Like, oh, I see you're trying to raise your army. Like, you can either greet me peacefully, or you can challenge me to a fight. And if you beat me, I think you get my entire troop, or, like, a good chunk. Oh, weird. But you, you've been to so many conventions and stuff, I'm assuming you walk up with your army. It's just like, oh, man. Right. Well, no, like my, I, I think I only have like a thousand troops right now. Oh, okay. Because you have, you have to give up troops to uh, improve your castle, and there's certain points if you lose like a bad combination, you'll lose troops as well. Hmm. Oh, okay. Like uh, you build your castle out of bodies, so you've just been. No, you're like, okay. Do you want to turn like a thousand people into workers to help improve your castle, and they never rejoin you for some reason? Okay. So it says right now I have a three thousand troops. Okay. But uh, one of my friends has about 10,000 currently, and there's an achievement for getting a million. Wow. So they obviously intend you to play more. Like, And each battle would be like rock, paper, scissors. You dictate how many troops you put into each type of character, which is like uh, a cavalry character, an archer character, or just a like a pikesman, just a standard soldier. Mm-hmm. And each one represents either rock, paper, or scissors. So uh, obviously the logic of rock, paper, scissors matches up. Like if you have... Rock versus scissors. Rock has an advantage. So if that that rock troop will cause the scissors troop to lose half their troops, and then it becomes a numbers game. So it's like, okay, now how many, what is the number total here now? Okay, rock has more characters, then that means they'll win. Or in the case of scissors, if they still have more, even when they're cut down in half, they will win. Do you, does it, does it say like, does it just skip to, okay, you're the winner, or do they actually fight and you can both possibly lose a chunk more in the battle? No, they'll, they'll, there's like a predetermined, like, okay, uh, type advantage, so the other troop loses half, but you'll see so like... So you're just a, kind of scaring the other ones off? Well, they they bump into each other. Like, it's like it's like Mii's version of fighting, like, crashing into each other. Like, bump, but do any actually, like, get taken out in the fight? They'll just see people get knocked away off into space. And does your number go down? Yes. Okay. So, okay. Uh, there's also, like, special advantages in the terrain as well. Like, uh, I played one mission where it was rocky, so cavalry was always at a type disadvantage. Right, okay. This but, is surprisingly deep. I know. Like, it, it's they're really cool. Apparently, like, a different company made each game, too. I'm, I need to look at who made what. This is what Rare's been working on. <laughs> no, yeah, God, I wish. 
Uh, but they're still Microsoft. No, you don't. Oh, uh, sorry, Retro, I meant. Oh, Retro. Oh, no, I'd rather Retro work on something else. I know, that's what I'm saying. That's like Maybe that's the sad reality. Yeah. Uh, the Spaceship game was made by Good Feel. Okay. I think they're all Japanese developers, too, is the other thing. Good Feel. I, don't, I have no idea what that is. Like the, the names sound familiar when I saw them all, but I just can't. I'll just space. Google search Good Feel and see what comes up. All right. Safe search off. <laughs> Uh, the the gardening one was made by Grezzo. Okay. And I think the Warriors one was made by Spike Chunsoft. Do you know the history of any of these? Or uh, I know the names. That's what's bugging me, but I can't think of what they made. Oh, okay. And Actually, uh, surprisingly, Good Feel isn't that bad. Okay. So... I don't know. Everyone There's some should... fun. Did you actually find the system. company, or did you literally just do a safe search off? No, I, I just Google searched "good feel" and did not. Okay. Oh, and... here's the company. Yes, you're right. Japanese game developer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the last one, Monster Manor, was made by Probe. P R O P E. They're doing. Oh, they're they're the company doing uh, Yarn Yoshi. Oh. Well, and Kirby's go. Epic Yarn. So. Well, well, there you go. As well as Wario Land, Shake It. Okay. Well, that's actually a pretty good thing. Uh, the last one, Monster Manor, is actually pretty awesome, too. Uh, you're street pass people, and they will give you pieces of a map. And these maps are basically kind of like Tetris pieces. So you will walk into a room, but there's no... You'll walk into a, like a floor of this manor, but there's nowhere for you to go. You have to take these map pieces and place them down, and they'll open up new rooms. And uh, sometimes you'll get into a random battle, and it's like a... a an action battle, kind of like Paper Mario. Like, you shoot a gun, basically, but you have to block at the same time to choose, like, to not get hit and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But uh, all the pieces you get are based on the color of the me you met. So if you combine pieces that are the same color, you'll open up treasure chest rooms or you'll open up, like, orb rooms where you can start going through, like, your, your inventory and, like, upgrading your weapons and stuff like that. Now, there's apparently there's like a bunch more elements to it later on, too, like boss fights, puzzle rooms, and everything, but I haven't gotten to them yet. So, are these quite more elaborate than the previous lineup? They are, by, by a ton. Now, the only downside is, if you have them all and you go through street passes, it takes forever to go through them all. Oh, okay. So, like, like let's say now, like, if you're just doing the puzzles for street pass, it takes, like, maybe a minute to get through everything. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're going through all four games and puzzle mode, and I'm not even counting, like, Find Me. I'm going to assume at this point you're done Find Me. Right, uh, yeah, I haven't played Find Me in forever. Yeah, if you, if you have to go through, like, all five of those, it'll probably take 20 minutes. Huh. So right, that weird yeah. problem us convention goers have of, like, damn it, my list is full, i got to clear this out, will take way more time. Yeah, it's super compounded at this point. Like, literally, by the time you are done going through everything, you will have another set to go through right away. You will not be moving for hours. Characters? Like still just up- ten. I, I don't know. I haven't uh, I haven't street passed anything more than eight since this update came out. But in the Monster Manor one, it only shows ten pictures. So I assume oh, okay. that means you can only have ten. Hmm. That's a problem, man. Worth but the yeah, cost, like, though, you think? Like, is hmm? this worth the price? This oh, the games are great. I, okay. I really love the game. I especially love Me Force and Monster Manor. Those two are fantastic. Uh, Warrior's Way, you need to street pass a lot of people to, to actually get a lot more out of that game, which is the only downside, or spend a lot of play coins. Mm-hmm. But like, I, I really recommend that. Flower Town, I was pretty cold on at first, but I'm warming up to it the more I unlock, because it's actually surprisingly more in-depth than I expected. Okay. If you like flowers and towns, you should play Animal Crossing. <laughs> both but, of those things are prominent. It's yeah, true. I don't know. I recommend getting all four games if you're going to get it. But I said be warned, like, the uh, the one that takes the longest to go through is Me Force, because you have to play an entire spaceship shooter stage. Wow. But everything everything else can more or less be done in, like, three minutes? Five minutes? Well, me, for- okay. me Force That's, can take, me force can take up a I'm going to sit down and play some Street Pass. I know, that that they've literally made it into, like, a full-blown game instead of just, like, the quick RPG you can like hold down the right trigger and go through and you can hold the right trigger for all these games as well but you okay. still have to do everything overall so mm. all right well it's kind of needed them to you know like a lot of people have been talking about street pass since that system came out so it's arguably like the most interesting thing the 3ds has so. yeah. right and this this definitely made it a lot more interesting but like it, it makes it be a lot more time consuming too so it's a weird trade-off where's all my augmented reality games though what happened they will 
the ones they made no one liked. Remember Spirit Camera? Oh, yeah. I heard it was really short. That's the only thing I heard. I was like, that was hour. another thing, too. Yeah. Well, hey, that, um... Where's that Fatal Frame game? That Chibi Robo that, game. That was the Fatal Frame game. That, that was Spirit Camera. It's actually a Fatal Frame spinoff? Spirit Camera is actually a Fatal Frame game, yeah. What? Oh, yeah. weird. Dude, that seems like, like it would be a great idea. Is I haven't played it. Maybe I should play it. Uh, I'm, I'm curious how long it actually does take to beat. Chibi Robo just came out. That was augmented reality. Cool. Well, that's only out in Japan right now, right? Only in Japan, but still, that, that happened. So wait around for... Okay. Maybe it'll happen. Yeah, Nathan, it takes three hours to go through Spirit Camera, or five and a half if you do everything. Okay. Has I it really also like how long to beat. Been I know, that, that site's coming discount. handy lately. But anyway. Okay. Anything else you need to bring up? That's it for me. All, All right. right. My turn. Um, I got a new computer. Yay! Ooh. Yay! So you should play um, Tomb Raider on it. Get the I could, sweet, yeah. Sweet uh, my old one that I was having all those Wi-Fi issues with a long time ago, mm-hmm. the sound card went. Oh. So I was like, all right, I, fuck this. I'm done with this machine. It's garbage. So I got a nice new one. It's great. There's not actually that much different with it, except it has the new i7 processor. What's your which... Windows experience meter at, yo? I, you know, I think it's actually lower. What? Just because it always goes off the lowest one. Oh, okay. Um, and let me, you know, let me get it up for you. System. I haven't rated this one, but last time I checked, I think it was like four point nine. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can't remember what that's based on, but, but that's one of the things, and then everything else is like high fives, if not sit in the sixes and whatnot. Okay. But yeah, I just really wanted that new Haswell i7 processor, so. And this one, yeah, no sound card issues, so that's definitely nice. Cool. Um, and playing on that, I've been... That was a weird Yoda sentence. On that uh, Anti-chamber? Playing. Yep. Uh, that game's weird, and I, I basically hit a wall that I'm happy with just not playing anymore. Why? What do you mean? You gotta like, solve that puzzle, I, dude. Right, but it's gotten to the point where you need to be, like thinking a lot. Yeah. And planning out just a ton. I have two of the guns. Okay. And it's gotten to the point where I need to figure out, like, how slowly do blocks disappear? How do I change that stuff? How can I get one block through this entire series of doors to bring it to this other area? Mm -hmm. And the map is designed to not help you. So I'm kind of just at a point where I'm like, I don't want to think this hard. I, was, I, I did find can't. I was playing it for like 20 minutes, half an hour, and I've gotten like three quarters through it and stopped as well. But Do you have all? Do you have three of the guns? I'm trying to think what the latest gun I have is. Um, I think I have three, you, yeah. Because I got blue and green. Okay, I have the one after that as I well. I think it's yellow. I've seen yellow. I haven't gotten to it. Yeah, I have the yellow gun now. Right. Um, and the thing is you can't like lo- load up a walkthrough very well because it's kind of hard to pinpoint where you are and where things are, kind of. Mm-hmm. You'd have to watch a lot to... I'd also I'd also feel that would be kind of undermining what the game's for. For so... sure, but I just, from like... Well, keep... think. Here's the other thing. It, my option is load up a guide to keep playing it, or I'm kind of done playing it. Okay. I'd rather keep playing it with, you know, some help, but I, the help in this game... I was going to kind of compare it to Braid in that respect, is like the reward is in figuring out the puzzles, but there's a lot less narrative element to this game. It is, there's like little mysterious write, written things and whatever, but I've, I've basically been told there is no story ending to this game. It's just, all right, you solved the puzzle box. Good job, man. Right. Like it just yeah. ends. So. And I, like, I totally understand that. I'm, I'm just kind of looking at it like, looking at it from like, well, the other option is I'm not finishing this game. Yeah, okay. and I would love to, but this game's kind of designed to not. It's not walkthrough friendly. Yeah, it's which is just un, kind of unfortunate for my scenario. I just kind of don't want to put in the manpower to this game, where the, whether instead I can go on to multiple other games. Okay, I I, I don't know. I I like the visual look of it too, but it yeah no it like it had some cool things and I was enjoying it, but I just hit this wall and I'm just yeah I, I instead of sitting at this one game. I, and hitting my head against it, I'd rather move on. Okay. So Do you that. uninstall it, or are you just... No, it's still there. This thing has, like, two terabytes of hard drive space. I don't think I need to uninstall anything ever. Okay. Well, let's, so... you know, it'll sit there and wait for you. Until you... Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh, just quickly, I finished Mystery Room last night. 
Yeah, I saw your tweet about it. Which was the Professor Layton thing. Uh, I don't recommend playing that game. The one benefit I can say about it is if you do buy everything, it's $5, and it I put eight hours into that game. So it's kind of a good value proposition. Okay. Um, But, you know, the majority of that is just kind of reading and stuff, and there's not even a, a story worth reading. They kind of put a bit of a story thing in the like the last two missions. Mm-hmm. Um, which, you know, you do have to pay for those two missions. Um, but up until that, it's kind of just, here's another murder, and you guys are going to figure it out. And by figure it out, it means you're kind of going to tap on the things that are already highlighted for you, and they're going to talk a bit. So, mm. I don't recommend it. There's no reason it should have Professor Layton in the title. Other than it's the thing that made you play it, kind of, right? Right. Which like, so, so I did that. So they're kind of exploiting the name in a way. It's just like, Professor they are. Layton? They, they, it's they, like, didn't it's even, not they don't even tie it in. They just say, yeah, you're his son, and that's it. Okay. It. They don't. He doesn't show up. They don't do anything with any other characters from that universe. That sounds pretty lame. Um, okay. So yeah, I can't. Was it level five? Thing. Like, was it them? It was. Huh. Which is the only reason they had the rights to do that, I guess. Yeah. Well, yeah. All right. Let's did so. did the proper latent games ever show up on another system? Didn't one of them show up on iOS? I thought I heard about the first one coming to iOS. I don't think in North America though. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Okay. Um. But yeah, so I can't recommend Mystery Room even if you're a Layton fan. Okay. Um, and then the so the last thing I've been playing, uh, I went to Trine One because Trine Two was on sale. I yeah. Picked that up and I was like, I really should play through Trine One first. Um, so I'm going through that. Uh, that game looks fantastic on my computer. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm enjoying that. Yeah, that's quite a bit. I'm finding though a lot of the puzzles you can kind of just like because they're all pretty physics based. Yeah. You can kind of muscle your way through some stuff. Like, yeah, just I'm not your supposed way. to make it to this ledge, but you know, if I kind of put a stick here and like jump really fast, I could probably just ignore this platforming section. Yeah, yeah. Um, which you know, not not a bad thing because that doesn't happen too often. Usually, I I, I can figure out the puzzles. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that game looks gorgeous. Uh, and I want to play some co-op. Um. Next time I have a friend over, because I kind of want to see if it would be harder or easier with co-op. Because if you're playing co-op, you kind of have to account for, okay, well, I can make it over, but you need to be able to make it over. Whereas, playing it solo and being able to switch to whatever character I want, as soon as I can get one character across, I can just move on. Yeah. Right? Like, the thief can, like, has the hookshot and can swing across ledges, which the knight in no way can do. But it doesn't matter, because as long as I can get, you know, one character across, they've all made it. Mm-hmm. So I'm interested to see how the co-op works with that, and I'm I'm really interested to see just kind of how this game evolved with trying to, because I've heard good things about both of them. So okay, I yeah, played a bit of the for... first one, but I don't know, never got Didn't through pull the whole in? thing. It it was kind of neat, like I you know the Lost Vikings style, different abilities helping you navigate environments and stuff. But I don't know, it just kind of lost me at some point. Like it's kind of really similar to like the cave. Yeah. In which, you know, you get three people, they have different abilities each. It seemed a lot more just left to right, though. Like, just go there, right? For sure. Like, like it's a puzzle platformer. Yeah. But, like, emphasis on, like, just physics puzzles. Like, not so much puzzly puzzles. Right. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I'm enjoying it. That game looks gorgeous. And when did that game come out? Like, 2009? Yeah, it was a few years ago. It's definitely a yeah, while ago. Yeah, the game is fantastic looking, and I don't know if that's just because yeah, 2009. I don't know if that's just because I'm running it on a PC, and that's awesome or what. But yeah, that game looks great. Trine, mm-hmm. yeah, like I heard, like the second one looks just as good too. Yeah, even so better. I can't wait to play that. I believe the first one's like six hours, and I put I think I'm like halfway through it. I might be going a bit faster than usual. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not 100 percent sure. It's Trine two pretty like recent. When did Trine two come out? Was that late last year? Trying to, I know, came out when the Wii U did. Yeah. That was one of the big games they touted. Okay. That is, they did come out around the same time then, okay. Trying to, no, was... Or was ported On Windows, it was December of 2011. (laughs) Oh, It came out on the, it was a launch title for Wii U. But that was Um, full year But it first came out, yeah, see, even Xbox Live Arcade, December 2011. It came out late 2011, like as late as you could get. Like, I'm looking at December 21st for Xbox Live Arcade. Was there anything special about the Wii that one then? Was it like, oh, it's the director's cut? Uh, it was the director's cut. That's all I remember. Oh, okay. Okay. Probably, you could probably play it on the gamepad. 
That too, yeah. It's awesome. What a cool yep. system. I don't know. I'm glad I have that thing hooked up again. But yeah. I'm glad Game and Wario exists. Yes. Yep. The Jimmy one isn't as fun as I'd like, but Which one's Jimmy? The skiing. The disco dude. Um I'm okay. Well, the best part of that is that little image before you hit like go and there's a bear. Okay. I, I actually yeah, I do just like the title screen art on almost everything. Like yeah. there, there's just some really great goofy takes on those characters. So. The, yeah, like um in the multiplayer one, the drawing game. Yeah. That's pretty that one's pretty good. Oh, there's some yeah, there's some funny stuff in there, but okay. Okay. Video games. Yep. Um I'm just trying to think if I've played Oh, just kind of, so, not a Steam sale, but Azura's Wrath was $10 this week on Xbox Live Marketplace. Oh, okay. There, there's a crazy Capcom sale going on right now. Yeah. So, I picked that up because that game is easily worth $10. Mm-hmm. And I found out they had, since I last played it, released some, like, half episodes, like 11.5 and 15.5, which are just full animations, so you don't play anything, but the, the quick time events are still in there. Okay. So I picked up those because they were a dollar each on sale as well, and I'm planning on playing through that again. Hmm. So I'll s- kind of see what those add to it, but I'm excited to play Azura's Wrath again. Did you get the lot, whatever the ending bit was? Oh yeah, I did that. When, when I borrowed yours, I bought that. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. You need to get that. So I, did. I I picked it up because I saw it was cheap, and like I put Azura's Wrath on my to play pile. So I can, you could finish it like real fast. <laughs> but okay, um, that's it. Let's go on to the news. All right. Most important story of all broke this morning. So, okay. Well, Nathan, why don't you do your stories? Okay. Hey guys. <laughs> of Deadly course, this premonition. Is the, story. <laughs> the director's cut of is. Of course it is. I know all of y'all were like, "Oh man, I can't wait for that to come to PS3." Wait a minute, frame rate problems. Aw, it's coming to PC, guys. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be amazing. And the weird thing is, though, like it's on green light. It's on green light. Think he wouldn't have to go through green light. I don't know. Like whatever small PC publisher he's using, they need. to It's go the same company light. that did the uh, PS3 port, Rising Star. Oh, okay, but you would I, just think like that game has been released retail. Like it's a big enough game. I guess Steam not. Just let it on. I don't know. I voted for it this morning, so all our listeners go to green light, vote for Deadly Premonition, even if you don't want to play it. Just, just, just vote for it. Just vote for, for Nate, so Nathan can play it. So I can play it. Um, and yeah, I don't know that that's happening. That's cool. Uh, and then the other story that kind of I think it was yesterday or two days ago. Um, a bunch of dudes from the SimCity game that just came out. Like the name I kept seeing was Ocean Quigley because that is a great name. Like you don't forget it when you've heard that a guy's name is Ocean. He was like one of the lead guys on that game. Uh, him and two of his bros from there, uh, Andrew Wilmot and Dan. Dan Moskowitz, they left Maxis to form Jellygrade, which is an indie studio, um, and they're working on something for mobile platforms. So, yeah. just kind of one the of those game, weird. The game's supposed to be like primordial, like evolution, right? Like they're talking about like oh, spore? early Earth type Kinda, stuff, but like actual pertaining to reality by the sounds of it, right? So I don't know, just some pretty high profile dudes leaving a kind of weird, controversial game to make something indie which is kind of cool i like it i like seeing this happen um so probably bad for maxis i don't i don't know but that's what happened so yeah i've heard nothing really about SimCity since all that bad business months ago what well, do you know right, the current yeah, state of it kind of just dropped off it was the hotness for a couple weeks right actually no the last thing i heard about it was just like how blatant the pay-to-play model seems to be in that game like it's like yeah you kind of can't manage crime unless you buy this superhero character for like 10 bucks like stuff like that like there's just oh, a lot stuff, but okay a lot of stuff you're supposed to purchase in that game which kind of also seems gross so probably a good move but anyway th- those are the two that kind of stuck out this week um, okay i got two they're kind of small but one of them's pretty funny okay they're both sony related first one Sno- sony announced the summer play lineup which is their xbox live arcade thing Okay. Um, so I'm just going to run through them. Is uh, rain? First on July 23rd, so this coming week, Stealth Inc., A Clone in the Dark. Okay. I don't know what that is, but anyway. July 30th, Cloudberry Kingdom. Oh, yep. cool. The reason I, that I, name is sticking out to that's me. That's because I talked about it at E3. 
Yeah, I played that too, actually. Okay, yeah, that was a really that. good game. I've known about this game for a while. I'm excited for this. But the, it's coming the, out on every system. The thing I um, didn't know about it was the randomly generated stuff. Which, yeah. that I didn't recognize that's what was happening is pretty impressive. Oh, so. that's where I know about this from. Patrick Klepek did a review, um, a podcast on it. Yeah. The Dump Truck on Giant Bomb. So it's platforming with randomly generated levels. Yeah. Based on the character. Right, right. Like, really short um, stages. August 6th is Ib and Ob. Yeah, I played this too. It was pretty nuts, but... Which is like, it's a puzzle game? It's a plat, yeah. It's like a platformer puzzler where you're playing two dudes who are kind of on opposite planes, like so one's upside down and one's right side up, and you're controlling them with the sticks, and you kind of need to navigate these weird environments with it. I think you could probably play oh, it so co-op it's not, too. It's not co-op with like a second player. It's co-op yeah, with it's your like left, it's right hand. Yeah, it's you kind of wrapping your mind around controlling two dudes. That's interesting. Yeah, uh, and then the last one, August thirteenth, is Ducktales Remastered. I also played that. And so just like the usual, if you um, buy two of them, you get three bucks back. Buy three of them, you get six bucks back. Buy four of them, you get ten dollars back. And plus members get a discount. So Sweet. Plus, plus members get a discount. So um, I'm interested in three of these, and I guess I'll wait to hear about Stealth because I know nothing about that. Yeah, I, I didn't if Stealth see is the game one. I think it is, I've heard it's pretty good. But I think I'm thinking of a different game. Also, if you say a clone in the dark fast enough, people will go like alone in the dark. What? And then it's, that's kind of funny, right? Uh, huh? Do you want me to list huh? off the summer huh? arcade games as well? Since we got that list as well, I got this T-shirt. Anyway, uh, yeah, go I ahead. guess we brought it up. I did. I did remember that we had the list, but yeah, I guess we're them off. Sure. Uh, August seventh, we got Brothers: A Tale of Two Sons. August fourteenth, oh, right. we get Charlie Murder, which is made by the uh, Dishwasher Team. That was the one that kind of stood out to me. Yeah, from that uh, lineup. Yeah, we get Flashback on August twenty first. That's a remake of that uh, game. That nineties. <laughs> thing. No, what? I know. People were excited it, it, about the it. The game is like, also called know. Flashback, so... Okay, it's a remake of that game. <laughs> yeah, you know, Flashback. That game, Flashback. All, all the kids love it. It's like Flashback, A Quest for Identity, or something like that. It was a rotoscope game, kind of like the original Prince of Persia. Okay. So, uh, yeah, apparently this is a full-blown remake of it. And then the one I'm curious about the most, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Out of the Shadows on August 28th. Okay. They've been releasing a lot of trailers for that. Yeah, like the it looks interesting. I'm just hoping it's actually good. I'm interested in that Brothers. I seem to recall seeing a video of that somewhere. Brothers is the only one of the four I don't know anything about. There was something that showed a video of it off. I don't remember where I watched it, but it seemed interesting. Okay. So Summer Arcade. All happening. And well, these are almost tra- going There's trailers on Xbox and on their website for it by the looks of it. Okay. Okay, this last news story, which is just the we- probably the weirdest thing I heard about this week. Okay. So, Sony announced Bid for Greatness. Have either of you guys heard of this? No. Yes. Okay. So, for those who haven't, you can go to their bidforgreatness.com website, and you sign up, and you attach your PlayStation Network account to it, and then you use your trophies, like achievement trophies, and you can bid for items that show up in PlayStation commercials. What? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, remember what that? Kind of so item they make a PlayStation makes a commercial? commercial for their game, like a I don't know, they make like an Assassin's Creed commercial or something. You can then bid for like Ezio's sword or whatever. Hypothetically, using, like, and I'm... then whoever bids the most gold trophies gets it. Mm-hmm. And they're using gold because I guess not a lot of people have because there's more gold. It would be I guess because the, the gold are the hardest to get, but still there's enough enough of them. So you don't have to platinum a game or whatever. Right, well, platinum, you'd only get one per game, whereas there's usually, like, three or five in gold ones or whatever. Okay. But it's still a challenge to get them. I don't know anyways, if I have that once many. you've used a certain number of your... Like, your the trophies don't go away off your profile. You just can't use them again. So if you have ten and you win a bid with, like, five, you now have five for the next time you want to bid. Okay. So I think the first one went through... And the guy who I don't know I can't exactly remember it was a it was some kind of gun for Killzone I think the okay. guy who won uh, cheated to get his trophies. <laughs> nice. Which is yeah like already first and off the bat and this is why we can't have nice things. Are they um, canceling so the program? That's, prob- or? So that's probably going to be like the end of that. <laughs> oh okay. It's just like put- I'm just I'm just guessing it's probably not the end of that since they look like they're putting effort into this but just the idea because the way that they haven't confirmed for sure and Sony hasn't gotten back mm-hmm. but they've taken a look at his PlayStation profile and according to his page um, he somehow managed to rack up over eight thousand trophies between November 2012 and January 2nd 
2013, so two months. Okay. Um, which I don't think that's physically possible. It is if you don't do anything else. 8,000? Like, they don't even have, like, the 1,000 thing. If you with... don't do anything else. <laughs> no sleep, no eat. Like, they ask him yeah. that. It's like, oh, no, dude, that's when I was unemployed. Like, yeah. Yeah. I played a lot of PlayStation. All right. No, you didn't play a lot of PlayStation. You played all of PlayStation. That's all I did. All right. I'm not proud of it, but it won me some <laughs> stuff. So, leave me alone. I thought this was a prize. Why you gotta make fun of me? Yeah, I don't know. Wait. Okay, this is just loading an ad for it. I, I, I clicked the bid for greatness link. I'm just wondering what other commercial items they would be talking about. Like, it's like, hey, you get Cole's jacket from... Infinite no, exactly. Stuff like that. Okay. And like it, Ellen so, Page's it's, headband. in it's, that. Exactly. Stuff like okay. that. So I haven't looked a ton into it because I don't care. Okay. But... <laughs> Just kind of interesting to see people trying to do stuff with achievements and then right off, like, because I put the story there with that being like, cool, this was, I'm glad, because I like achievements, it'd be cool to get stuff for them, and then I just, while we were doing this podcast, I found an article saying it's already broken. Just like things happened on the Xbox side, so. That one time they did the prizes with Contra and everything, yeah. That, so, there's, there was that. But, I thought that was a, a weird thing that happened this week. Okay. And kind of a nice, like, hy- like parabolic arc to that. Mm-hmm. So, you can you can see the parabola. All right. Um, let's go on to all of our questions. There's a bunch. So, okay. Well, we're just more popular at gmail.com or the Facebook page or TP Podcast on Twitter. Those are the ones, yeah. right? All right. All right. So, first one comes in from Kyle, John. Exactly. How do you plan to kill a meal like in New Super Mario Bros. Wii? We want to see more John killing Chugga moments. Um, Two like ecstatic this, faces. Really XD, ecstatic. XD. Like this guy, these faces can't see. This That's guy has I mean. two sets of eyes and two mouths. They're yeah. oddly stacked on top of each other. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like it's two ecstatic people. One is underneath the chin of the other one. <laughs> one is now sitting on the ex- other guy's shoulders. Let's just explain sure. emoticons, but okay. Yeah. Yeah. Runaway guys type thing. Lol, just wandering. Not wondering. He's, <laughs> he's, he's walking he's around, around somewhere around. in a field. He can't wait to... Yeah, he needs to know. When are you going to kill Chugga more? I don't know. Uh, I mean, we need to be in a game that that can happen. Okay. And how do you plan to kill him? Or is that up your sleeve? That's, that's kind of spoiling. It would depend on the game. <laughs> well, this is New Super Mario Bros. Wii. No, he says like in New Super Mario. Like that thing oh, that I happened. See. Okay. Yeah. So. All right. I, so. Is this just a roundabout way of asking, "Hey, what game are you playing next?" I kind of. Maybe. Oh, man. All right. And all I can say is, next game we're playing does not give me that ability. Okay. Whoa. <gasps> you heard it here first. Revelation right. here on the podcast. No right. mass murder. Okay. Next question comes in from Joey. Hey guys, what are your best tips for maximizing? profit during the steam sales steam sales it seems that with my luck i buy a game on sale only to have it discounted even more that day it's it's all about kind of patience right you just got to build a wish list and then just wait right. for a flash sale or a highlighted feature sale those right are so i actually emailed this guy back because i didn't want him to miss out on more sales before we recorded and went, this went up yeah but yeah that's totally right i like i found a flow chart it's basically you find a game you want the, the, the options are, is it a, like a daily deal? No, well, then you don't pick it up. Is it a flash sale? No, then you don't pick it up. Is it a voting sale? No, then you don't pick it up. Is it the last day of the sale? No, then you wait. Yeah, and sometimes like stuff, you know, like Far Cry 3 is on sale right now. I'm assuming that is also when Blood Dragon is on sale. Like they won't necessarily highlight all of the stuff, but you can click and look at DLC and such, and it'll also be steeper discounted than normal with some of this. So... Like, I got Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon off, like, 55% off instead of 40% off because it was during a Far Cry 3 sale, which, yeah, I don't know. So if you're if you're looking for a sequel or a lesser-known thing that's attached to a game, that stuff might also go steeper every day. Yeah, so, like, I, I, like, what you said the first thing, I'm doing that thing right now. You make a wish list, you just watch all the sales, and then if it's the last day and there hasn't been a, ste- a special sale... Buy them then, and yeah. you'll get the lowest price. Yeah. That's, that's how All you right, do it. All right, this next one's from Aeneas? Aeneas? Yeah, I guess so. Aeneas sounds right. 
First off, thanks to you guys and your podcast, it's making bug hunting to pay off my house debt in Animal Crossing that much easier. It's also making drawing a hell of a lot more enjoyable. With that, I gotta ask, Jonathan, when in the holy Skittles are you getting new leaf? I didn't realize Skittles were that holy. Yeah. I don't know I if I... Dark Skittles at the store the other day. That's not holy at all. That's like complete opposite. Dark, those opposite. are demon Skittles. They're the only Skittles I haven't tried, though, but I'm not a candy person. I don't know, so... I might... I don't know what I'm gonna do. Uh, to answer the question, I own New Leaf, but I have not played it yet because I'm kind of scared to. You're worried it'll just start eating away at your day, or kind of, yeah. Well, yeah. if he's a completionist, he let it, will never end because you need to die to complete that game. God. Well, just but based on previous ones, like the amount of upgrading you need to do to have a max house is stupid compared to previous ones, which also but means the game you can have a way bigger get a max house. house because there's always tomorrow. Yeah. And John will always want to see tomorrow. No, there'll there'll eventually be a point where I get bored and stop. Mm-hmm. I don't know, you're not, but then you won't have completed it. I stopped Wake Up can't. Club. Did you? Yes. Oh okay. wow! But you were also the last person in the world. To <laughs> no, I'm not. Like, there's no one else to wake up. I can almost like, guarantee no if I start Wake Up Club like tomorrow, there will be at least one other person playing Wake Up Club. That's because he designed the game, John. <laughs> Or he just got a Vita finally. He's checking out what this is all about. That could happen. Hot, hot wake up club title about. Mm -hmm. All right, next question. Craig writes in with the recent release of Earthbound on Virtual Console. Do you think Nintendo will ever release Mother Three on the 3DS eShop? Ugh, (laughs) I don't know. I was just like, we finally got this thing. All right, what's next? I I don't think. Like this is good the day of too. It's the day of. I know this just happened. Um, I don't, yeah, that would be kind of out of character. Has it been translated? If so, that's easier to Officially, do. Officially, no. Unofficially, oh. yes. But the person who made that translation has literally offered it to Nintendo for free. Okay, that it would probably that would be like a... over the internet, and Nintendo's scared of the internet. So yeah, that's true. Yeah. God, especially after all the Evo things. Oh, we didn't even mention the Evo thing. We didn't mention Evo. Wait, oh, that was, a, that was Evo. this past week? Yeah, that was. was this weekend, dude. Oh, like the fact that Evo happened, the, not the Smash Brothers thing. That no, that no, we it's talked about Evo. that. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, Evo or uh, Smash Brothers set a record for uh, like viewers or yeah, like it was the most viewed fighting game stream at 135k. Although it did get beat later that night by Marvel vs. Capcom 3 by like 10k, it uh, still okay. still set a record. So it was the second most viewed game of Evo. Cool. So, so Nintendo's probably like kicking their ass right you now, were, or maybe when you it's because first of that. Came up with this statistic. You thought it was the most viewed game, and then you corrected yourself. What is the most viewed game? League of Legends. Okay, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, the problem was I read an article, which is where I got the stats from. You read an article, you say? Yeah. <laughs> you made that sound What's... weird. That was. Yeah. What was up with that? Well, it was just kind of like the... you're just like, well, I read an article on somewhere. Maybe the the lack of where I that thought you were gonna say from. more about it. Um, do, do you want me to find where that article was no, from? No, no, I'm not saying like you should have said more. Just the way you had originally announced it made it seem like you were setting something up. But the way you set it up was like the, like the smallest thing. I don't I don't remember the site though. I know there's a it was on Kotaku as well, but that's not where I originally got the information. Okay. Okay. Anyway, what? Um, also that, some of those so Evo matches were crazy. You watch? I I watched uh, the majority of the finals. I watched Smash Brothers finals. I watched uh, Marvel finals, and I watched Street Fighter finals. Okay. And some of the like the Marvel finals. If if you want good highlights, just watch Justin Wong's Marvel finals or Marvel highlights of the finals because it was ridiculous. Like he was so entertaining. The crowd was way too into it. He was making like this ridiculous comeback. Sorry, mm-hmm. which game was this? Um, Mar- Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom three. Okay. Who was playing who? Justin Wong. Uh, just all of Justin Wong's matches, really, all you need to watch. No, I meant, like, what, what, what Marvel characters? heroes. Oh, uh, Justin Wong was playing Akuma. Oh, you're going to make me remember this. Akuma Storm. And who the hell was the third character that Justin Wong kept having? Was it Jean Grey? No, it wasn't Phoenix. Was it was She-Hulk? It Spider-Man? No. no. Was it Wolverine? What? Yes, it was Wolverine. Thank you. Wow. All right. We we're just guessing high-profile characters. Okay. And who was he playing against? 
Uh, he was playing, uh, the first set that I watched that was really interesting was he was playing against Chris G, who's like a super well-known fi- uh, fighting game player now. Uh-huh. He was playing uh, Dr. Doom, Morgan, and Virgil. Virgil's a cool character so far in the game I've been playing. I've, Appa- I've enjoyed it. Apparently Virgil is like super broken in Marvel right now. Oh, okay. Returning to Craig's question though for a second, um, to clarify, Earthbound's only on the Wii U, right? Yes. So th- this extra bit of like it being on the eShop, like extra unlikely because they have like the 3DS eShop, you mean? Yeah, like I w- I wouldn't bet on it. Well, let's know. let's put it this way: there are no Game Boy Advance games currently for sale on the eShop. Yeah. Only right. ambassadors had, have GBA only games. Only the ambassador ones, yeah. So, so if it, which I'm if, very happy about, yeah. I I going to play through Minish Cap one day. If uh, if Mother Three ever did come out for the eShop, it would not be for like probably another two years. Yeah, and then at that point, it's the next console. No, I don't know. I, I'm... Okay. Um, Isn't there how, a... long is, how long has the 3DS been out? It's only been two years, right? No, no three years. Ooh, then two, we actually two are. Two to three years. In two yeah. years, it's dangerously close to the cycle. Ooh. Could happen. What do you mean? But, like a, all right. What do you mean? Like a new 3DS? Like a new handheld? Yeah. From Nintendo? A new handheld or like a new like update? Ha- new handheld, because they've already got the XL. But they usually always have like three updates. That's true. Well, how long did the DS run before we got the X? Well, it so came out like years, 04. wasn't it? Well, it was DS. Then we had DS Lite, then DSi, and then DSi XL. So we had four of those. Yeah, but how long was that? That was over a seven-year time span. Six, seven years, yeah, something like that. Yeah. So never mind. Maybe, maybe we've got a couple years left on the 3DS. Hopefully, three or but... four. All right. Um, Shane. Hey guys, I was curious about what your thoughts are on a game give difficulty. Do you think games and I just oh, do you think games need to be more challenging or do you think they are at a good level of difficulty, I guess generally speaking? Um hmm. I feel like well it's because there's difficulty levels. Yeah. Just pick pick which one you're good good with. Yeah, I'm trying to think, like, like what, like you know, what? like there's kind of like that general trend of like, well, Dark Souls and Demon Souls are popular because games got too easy for a long time. So then this hardcore alternative finally came out and people were happy about it. But there's always been hard stuff around if you really want to push into crazy town. Like you could play. Like, to be fair, though, like on the... both both you and John have recently started up a game right to hard mode was the first one. Wait, Wait what game did you play? Last of Us? Yeah. La- like, I'm thinking Last of Us and Deadpool. Right. So... Okay, to be fair, I do that a lot, so and, I, I and might not be the best the example. With, there's also the thing with Halo, of the whole, like, real Halo players play on hard the way a game's meant to be played. Yeah, I mean, the Spartan game even dude. says that's how you're supposed to play it, though. Which yeah. is an odd thing. Is that, what is it? Gears Spartan? of War did the same Legendary? thing, too, Gears of War 3. It did? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it literally said hardcore. Like, if you play the other Gears games, this is what you should be playing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. Like, in the case of Last of Us, it just... I heard enough people say it kind of fit the game. Like, it just made sense. And, like, for the desperate measures, like, the desperate situation that game is set in, I kind of agreed, so I I played it on that. So, John, you normally play on hard, though? Is that what you're saying? It it depends on the game. Uh, in the usually those crazy action games, like Bayonetta, Devil May Cry, and that usually all opt for hard first. Okay. But like, with f- Devil May Cry, I just did default. Like, I did normal. So Yeah. But for, uh, let's say, Last of Us, I'd probably just sit, start on normal. Hmm. Nathan, do you normally go normal or hard? I normally go whatever the default is. So, if we're, if we're saying, like, is that default difficulty usually too easy? Sometimes I feel like that is the case. Like, it's, like, really holding your hand and telling you exactly where to go and what to do. It depends but, on how many people they're trying to uh, market the game to. Yeah, the game that seems to be an approachability kind of thing. Like, which is why I guess I was so impressed by Demon Souls for like foregoing a lot of that stuff. Like, it was just like, no, you just figured out, man. You've played video games, right? And you're just like, yeah, I have. I'll, I'll, I'll do my best. Um, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it's like a thing you can kind of say everyone should do. I do like that rogue kind of games are popular in a way again, like FTL was a recent one, and then Legacy playing it this past week. Like, they have sort of... You could kind of grind your way through anyway, but if you're better at the game, it'll help you like to do do well in those. But they kind of found a cool balance between extremely hard, but also just easy to wrap your mind around and get into. Um, with Rogue Legacy specifically, and to a lesser extent, Splunky, that game's crazy. But I still want to beat it. But, um, 
I don't know. So I don't know. There's options out there if you if you're looking for harder games. Um, maybe you're just playing. I usually play on normal. Yeah. Um, just to make sure I can like finish it without getting without taking too long. Um. So That's do I think, think games need to be more challenging? Not not generally. No. I think that exists. Like the the harder games are being catered to. So anyway, uh, there's also a follow up question. Um, would you guys considering making a TDP YouTube channel for things like tabletop down perspective? Um. I don't know. Does that I've sound like a good idea? I've seen a lot of people doing this lately because apparently they just prefer the YouTube video, like video player. Right. S- some people like yeah, just like queue it up on YouTube and listen to it in the background. Oh, so you take your Twitch video and then post post it elsewhere? Yeah, like I've been doing that with some of my streams on my channel. Okay. I, gu- I we, guess. Yeah. yeah. Like, is that e- how easy is that to do, John? Um, pretty easy. Like, there's okay. like a transfer button, but like it's got to be. Two hours or shorter, but like there's there's ways around that basically. Yeah, because that one was like five, right? Yeah, we but. we could probably do that. I I don't see why not. Yeah, no. I don't know. I feel like though, if we did, made a separate channel for Top Ten Perspective, we should probably also start uploading Top Ten Perspective to YouTube as well. Just the podcast? Yeah, we could okay. do that. We could, like we we, we like... have had people request that. We have. okay, which I don't understand why, but we have. All right, that's that's right. the thing we'll look we'll into. look into it. Uh, Connor writes in, Hey TDP, here in Ireland we've been having a massive heat wave, which is a change from all the rain we usually have. I was just, I was just thinking if I should do this in an accent. I was <laughs> not going to. But yeah. Anyway. Okay. Uh, my question is, what is your favorite kind of weather? Um, hmm. I went running yesterday in nice. what was the perfect weather. It was... You mean when it rained? Just like, before it rained. Okay, because it like heavily rained yesterday. Like there, yeah, there was a point where like it was overcast, but it was not too warm and not too cold. It was just perfect. Mm, okay. I, I cannot, I don't, can't even describe what the so temperature what, was. It was te- probably what, like what, te- what degrees is that? It was probably eighteen degrees Celsius or something like All right. that. I was like, say, it was yeah, absolutely perfect. Something around eighteen is a, is pretty nice. Like All right, nice, for gentle... me, like I've been really digging when we hit thirty. Oh man, like that's so too far. The into hotter, the, hot. the better. Really? Okay. Yeah. Basically, always. Like this weekend, it's it's going back to like twenty nine and stuff. I'm going to the lake. I honestly it's think awesome. it's just like since I got sunburned real bad as a kid, I'm just scared of that ever happening again. So I have like a weird sun phobia. I don't want to burn. Just put sunscreen. You're good. I do, I just, but I just don't like overheating super fast. That's my thing. Okay. Like I don't mind super hot weather if I'm swimming. Yeah. Then it's perfectly fine. But um, if you're going for a run, you could get you could sweat more and that's better. That is technically better, but then I also run out of energy faster cuz like the heat will sap more energy than it that's would true. in we'll proper. You got to make sure you got some water. You you had a nice meal. So, I don't know, for me it's hotter the better. Okay. Whereas yeah, like 20, like 18 to 22 degrees, that's the sweet spot. That's what you want. Yeah. And not too uh, that's, much that's why I'm more of a spring guy than a spring fall guy than a summer winter. Okay. Um, on a more gaming related topic, are you looking forward to the new Adventure Time and regular show games? I, I didn't kn- realize there was going to be a regular show game. I didn't know that either. Have you seen the name of the Adventure Time game? Yeah, What's no, we had an article about it. It was fantastic. I love that Adventure name. Adventure Time explores the dungeon because I don't know. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, there's there's footage of it out there. Apparently, it's kind of Diablo esque, is what they're saying. That's what it sounds like. I haven't looked into either of them. I also I, the, don't the footage got released show. last night, and I haven't watched it yet. Okay. Um, I feel like I need to play that first one. What is it called? Like you, some, you don't the, the really need King. to because it's not really a hey, follow-up. Ice King, why'd you steal our garbage or something? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. You don't need to play it. It's it's technically not a follow-up. Okay. I know. I just feel like I should see like. What, I didn't what hear it was there. that bad. It was. It's just a good kinda... game. It's just easy. Yeah. And okay. short. Okay. What's what's do you? I guess we just all found out about it, so I don't know what the details are on the regular show game. Well, that, John, you played the first Adventure Time game, right? Yeah, I, I completed so, it. Okay. Are you for more? But you don't watch the show. No. But are you I, for I, more? I I was looking at the DVDs actually uh, at HMV the other day, mm-hmm. and like they were they were super cheap. It was like two for twenty. But I don't know where to start or if I should just watch it all on Netflix because I think it's all on Netflix now. No, it's it's not I think just the like first Canada. the first seasons on Netflix. Not in so. Canada. I like just looked it up because I was thinking I should watch season two, and it's not on there. Okay. Um, hide your IP, dude. But whatever. You, you, yeah, you can switch to America. Which I know, John, you have that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, that's why I thought we I had would just it start here. at season one and just go. 
Oh, well, that's the thing. Like, I looked at all the DVDs I saw there. I couldn't tell what was season one. Oh. Okay. They were all labeled like Jake versus something or oh, like Adventure Time. Actually, yeah, they Cartoon Network kind of does these weird just collections of assorted episodes. Sometimes. Yeah, and I can't tell if those are actual seasons or yeah. they're just you like and I whatever. Both have season yeah, one. they do do seasons too, though. We, they do we actually do a, proper seasons. Yeah, we have a season one release, which is all of the first season. I think it's like what. 20 something episodes? Well, 16? Oh, yeah, I can't quite remember. But yeah, but, when, when Nathan and I bought it, it was like $12. Yeah, right, well, I'll no, have to go see if cheap. I can properly find that then. Um, I, But yeah, if you want just a sampling, though, like the Netflix thing, that they do have the first season. So I, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. That show, sometimes it does it for me. Sometimes I'm just annoyed by it. I don't know. But we'll see. I guess like, the same could be said of regular show. Kind of inconsistent. First season, though, it's really good. Never seen regular show. Yeah, I've I've seen the first episode of regular show. It was good. I like the first, yeah, the first episode was good. Oh, if okay. you like Adventure Time, you will probably like regular show. Probably that's what I've heard. Yeah, All or right. Bill and Burke Ted, Wrightson. maybe. But anyway, okay, yeah. Burke Wrightson, what was your worst sunburn experience? Oh, all of them. Okay, um, this was actually the thing that that scarred me. I went to Sylvan Lake, um, okay. and I was just like, hey man, if I'm in the water, I can't burn, right? Right. That that's made true. sense to me as a kid. <laughs> Um, got out, worst, like, whole back, just red, and it was like that for weeks. And right, you just took, you basically shed. Yeah. Just took a and layer like, of I don't know, off. like, the main point I remember where it was just like, this is ruining everything, it was, I was at my favorite bookstore trying to buy some Charlie Brown books, and then just, like, had this weird, like, my back is just re- really hurts right now, I'm just trying to enjoy my bookstore. I oh man, really the sun upset. ruined books for you. Yeah, it almost <sighs> ruined books for me, I was really what sad. What a dick. Yeah, that was a bad summer. So that was my worst summer experience. I'm trying to think when that, like, how old I would have been. Like 12, maybe? Something like that? It was just bad. It was just a terrible time. So, yeah, whole back was And red. ever since then, you never stepped outside. Never stepped outside without sunscreen. And sometimes sunscreen, like, I don't know. I got the canned stuff, and it just goes on real weird. Like, it's shiny. The canned stuff? Like, the oh, aerosol. Shiny. The aerosol can. Yeah, you want the spray stuff's the best because then you don't have to get your hands all gross. Really? Yeah, no, like I always, I always use the bottle stuff proper, anyways. I might just no, use I hate some it because then your hands get all gross. Well, oh, Nathan, and... the other question is, what SPF do you use, and did you use Sport Mix or did you use normal? Uh, this one's like thirty, I think. That's super low. What are you doing? Is yeah, if you're low? gonna do like outside stuff, you want fifty. Damn. Like, if, especially if you were doing all like the Stampede cleanup. Okay. No, I didn't get burned in the past couple weeks, but. Uh... Okay, I guess I'll go higher next time. It's all like when out. I went when I went to Cuba. I brought an SPF 50, and I think I came back whiter than when I went there. <laughs> okay, so that'll that'll do proper shield. I don't think I've had a super sunburn experience. Okay, I, my nose in the past used to get burned pretty easily, but nothing like bad or anything. Okay, so uh, when I used to do a lot of cycling as a kid, I would get sunburned pretty bad. So like my arms would always be to- toast, my face would always be toast. My sister fell asleep on like a pool floaty one year outside in a pool. Ooh. Um, her skin went like purple. Oh gosh, that sounds horrible. Yeah, it was like two days of lying on in her bed, being like, "Nobody move the air in this room, please." <sighs> okay. So, the sun, man. That... Jeez, that ozone layer. What is it? What's causing this? UV radiation. Yeah. UV. Yeah. UV. Yeah, Ultra shield. Anyway. But yeah, no, I'm pretty lucky. Um. All right. So, Junkie GS. If uh, which this is an interesting one, I didn't know about this. So okay. apparently, if you pre-purchase a digital version of Pikmin Three from GameStop this weekend, you'll get it a day early. Should more games do this? Not like that. With going that's, to a store to get a digital. That's kind of weird, thing. actually. That, well, that's it's weird because it's it's the digital one from the store for a day early. Yeah, yeah. it's like you well, get a it's, voucher. It's, or it's probably also because like the Wii U does not have digital pre-ordering yet. Okay. Like, so it's not at the level of like PS3. I think isn't PS3 the only system that can do that currently? Besides PC, obviously. Yeah, PC. I think so. I didn't well, know. I mean the the Sony. I didn't know the PS3 could. Well, the Sony is Play it, thing it... we just looked at actually it said, hey, if you pre-order your game, you'll get. Oh a yeah, you're right. Does do you know if it installs it like Steam? I think it. I think if you have Plus, it will like auto-download the game when it's available. Okay. Okay, but it won't do it ahead of time and then let you just go. As far as I'm aware of. That okay. pre-installing would be cool, cause like with a lot of the Steam games I've been buying, uh, for example, Rage is probably the weirdest. Uh, it's like 17 gigs, so you buy it, you don't get to play that thing for a while. Um, right. If you if with this though, like if you can preload Pikmin 3 ahead of time and then jump in. 
Like, I'm I guess... going to say no, more games should not do this. I think games should come out as soon as they're done. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's with all this PR build-up and stuff? Just release that thing. Code's done, well, it's, go. It's kind, of, it's kind of the example more I'm thinking of is with, like, Xbox Live Arcade, how it's like, oh, you want a game? We have an open slot in two months. How about that? Uh, yeah, Th- their release system is kind of crazy. So, okay, if, if you're saying like that. But, like, a big t- title like this... Or, but even the idea of, like, no, Tuesdays is game day. I'd rather just be like, hey, we got this game in, it's out. Right. But then it's hard to, like, know when to go get it. Mm-hmm. That's true. Well, so what? Like, once you know it's on out, just go get it. Like, it, because that would avoid not, all Not the everyone finds that out. Like, haven't you ever been in a position where there's a game you want and you didn't realize it was out? Um... I've kind there's of, gotta be at least one point that happened to you. There's guys. been time, like specifically with Dead Island, there was like, I don't know if I want this yet or not. I'm kind of waiting on videos to come out, and then I saw some footage of it. I was like, all right, cool, let's go. And it was like Thursday, and it was all gone already, which that was horrible. But I, I don't know, like digital releases though, that should just be a thing day one all the time everywhere. But the thing they're saying here is if you pre-order it, you day get early. it early. Yeah. I mean, which I, I, sure. I guess that idea because if you're pre-ordering it, clearly you have a a higher level of commitment to this game. Yeah, like I'm pretty jazzed about Pikmin three, so I could, in theory, be the person that this would be for. But that that they cut GameStop in on the deal kind of weirds me out. Like, is it just GameStop though, or is it the fact that it's a store? that it's a physical store? Like that's just weird. Like it's like, hey, go down to Best Buy to get this promotional thing. It's like, well, like I said, they I haven't got a pre-order feature in the Wii U yet. Once they do that, then they can stop having a middleman. All right, they should do that. I guess. So the question is, are they doing this because GameStop wants a reason to keep selling digital games, or are they doing it because Nintendo doesn't have an alternative? I guess probably both. I've just. I don't know if this is 100% true, but one. this is what I'm told. Like, GameStop also is the exclusive dudes that can get you Steam money. Like, codes. Um, yeah, but I feel like there's other stores you can get that at now. I feel like, I think I saw Steam cards at Target. Like, hopefully. I, I would have thought that would be a widespread thing, but then apparently they, like, they just print out a receipt, like a number on the receipt, and that's that's how you add it to your Steam wallet. And GameStop has some sort of deal on that front. I don't know. That's what I'm told. I'm not, I'm not sure. I received a gift recently. Okay, so, that so back to the specific question. Yeah. So let's say Nintendo doesn't figure out pre-orders for a while. Do you want this to keep happening? Would you be excited for a day early? I'd want earlier than one day. It's almost not worth it at that point. Right. I guess I'm thinking of that too. Like, I can wait a day. Who cares? Like, wasn't it like the PlayStation Plus early access to Journey was kind of cool? Like that was, right, like, a that was week like a week early. or something. Yeah, that so. kind of makes more sense. But I, yeah, a day isn't worth getting too excited about. I'm I'm rarely at a point where I'm like jonesing so hard to play a specific game that is going to eat up an entire day. You know, like right away. That right. hasn't happened in a while. Well, and that's so that's also like I guess this is similar to my thoughts on like midnight launches. It's, it's like I can just wait. Like I'm not going to play it that much anyway, regardless of how much I play games at one time, or because it's midnight. Yeah. Like, um, I did so pick like, up Max I can just wait. I don't really care at midnight, but that was more just because I had an opportunity to do that. It wasn't like, I can't wait to play this game. I'm like, so the thing excited. is, uh, that I was thinking, like, it, it's definitely nice to get games early, but as soon as the game's out, it doesn't really matter how early you got it. Everyone has it, and they're playing the game, like, whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to, like, race to be the first one done or anything, so it doesn't, like, getting a game early doesn't do a ton for me. Okay. Yeah, I can... I'm sort of similar on that. Like, there, every now and then there's a game I'm like, I need to play this as soon as possible. Like, I'm just really excited. But very, very rare. So, yeah. Alright, Allison writes in, Did any of you get Shin Megami Tensei 4 for the 3DS? Mm-hmm. Or are answer, Atlas answer. RPGs not your thing? Do you have a preference of their games? I answered that one earlier. I picked it up because they did that $30 eShop credit thing. Mm-hmm. And I was going to get it anyways. Right, and I guess if you got Fire Emblem, it's almost like getting this game for ten bucks, kind of. Or no, how much is it? I think it's fifty. Is it fifty? Okay. I think it's which kind of blew my mind when I saw it for sale at Toys R Us at first. Still, it's like getting it for twenty bucks. Isn't that? You know you're I think that's buy the it. most expensive three DS game. If you buy it digitally, is it digital? Can you buy it digitally? Yeah, I'm do pretty sure I've seen it in the, the shop. Do you also get the code? Yes, as long as it's been registered on 
Bo, like both games have been registered in your club Nintendo, you get the credit. And that credit okay. is available for, I think, a month, maybe a little bit less. Hmm. So I guess this is would kind of like because I have Fire Emblem. I don't yeah. think I've registered on Club Nintendo yet. But as long if I pick this game up, I know I'm going to be buying Nintendo games in the future. Yeah, it's like I'm getting it for twenty bucks. That's kind of a a good deal, I guess. And keep in mind, Fire Emblem is like forty. So I mean, uh, that's that's ninety dollars, but you're getting thirty back. Right, but yeah, but just like for my situation specifically, it's like I'm getting this for twenty bucks because I know I will use that credit later. I do also wonder if. Uh... 4 is going to be cheaper once they stop sending out the collector's edition version. Hmm. Because this version came with... Here, let me grab it. uh, An art book slash guide, uh, soundtrack CD, and obviously the game itself. And I think there's something else it came with, too. And I'm pretty sure, Nathan, you're the only one who's played their, like, me, a lot of their RPGs, like the Persona series, right? Well, yeah, that that's the thing I'm kind of scratching my head over is I don't know what Shin Megami Tensei means as a core thing anymore this, like this yeah this is the core series yeah when did it splinter off into persona because well, i let's like put persona it this... three and four are pretty good let's Those put it this way good. uh shin Megami tensei three was a ps2 game yeah uh and one and two i believe were super nintendo games what, what's nocturne then that was the weird that that's three Oh, okay. So that this is returning to that core franchise. I I believe that's three. Now you've got me curious. Okay, because I think the only Shin Megami Tensei games that I've played are Devil Survivor on the DS. Yeah, and I have Devil Summoner. So I I don't know. Like, yeah, it's pretty much exclusively the team that made Persona Four. Like, I'm interested in those guys. So I also liked Catherine. Okay. I was gonna say, in terms of preference, Catherine's been my favorite game, but I've only played the two games from them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nocturne is in fact Shin Megami Tensei three. Okay. So this is the sequel to that. I didn't. I didn't know how far back. I this don't goes. believe they're connected in the sense of those characters from Nocturne show up in this. Mm-hmm. Well, it, I guess it. You could kind of compare it to the Final Fantasy labeling thing, where it's a different world every time mm-hmm. or whatever. It's just the numbering got really weird at some point. Uh, I'm pretty sure the idea behind Shin Megami Tensei is that. The enemies, the monsters, all are in all of these games. Yeah, okay. Like, okay. You do see a lot of the same designs and stuff. Like, Jack Frost is in right, a bunch yeah. of that stuff. Yeah. But uh, to answer your question, Nathan, Persona started on the PS1. Okay. The first two Persona games were on PS1. The next two were on PS2. So does Shin Megami predate those? Yes, because that's Super Famicom. Okay. At, at least, if not earlier. Okay. So that's where. Uh, it in gets... fact, I'm going to look that up. Yeah. But yeah. The... First Shin Megami Tensei, Super Famicom. Yeah. Look, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't have any like real attachment to the Shin Megami Tensei core series. Like, I've heard Nocturne's cool. I haven't played it, but um, that's the only one I'm really even familiar with. So, like, I don't know. Generally speaking, like, I just look at Atlas as they're a publisher of weird stuff and sometimes I like that stuff like Xenoclash and Demon Souls are pretty cool but uh I don't know their RPG stuff I have not even tried to follow up on all that stuff like is Devil Survivor good what's that all about it's a tactics card based fighting game okay it's fighting card game. based tactics, but it is a tactics game, game. yeah okay uh, I heard Devil Survivor is pretty good I mean it's got two it's also Devil Survivor 2 came out yeah and then uh, Overclock for 3DS okay yeah I guess I I prefer if do I have a preference? Yes, it's their Persona games. I like that they're contemporary set and like high schools and all that stuff. I find that kind of funny, and I will play Persona Five probably. And John, what's your preference? <sighs> Just the core ones, or I'm kind of everywhere on Persona on uh, Shin Megami. Okay, all right. My preference is Catherine. Okay. Catherine is Catherine two. even considered a Shin Megami game, though? Not really. Well, no, no, but it's an Atlas game. It is an Atlas Okay, Well, thing. if we're going to go to Atlas games, then I feel like you're opening up a whole different can of worms. Uh, yeah, that's true. Because, like, well, I feel like, like they published Bomberman at some point, so then I'm going to count Bomberman as my favorite Shin well, Megami game. Well, I feel game. like Catherine is, like, a close enough, like... Aw- like it, it is the same exception. team. It is the same team, but I think that it's... They specifically state it's not within the Shin Megami world. And does say mean, yeah, Atlas. Or apparently, apparently Megami Tensai is the, is the world. Okay. Is the whole series. Because there's like uh, a Namco published game just called Digital Devil Story Megami Tensai. And that's where the series started. But then the Shin Megami series started with uh, Shin Megami Tensai. Hmm. All right, last email. Lucas writes in, We all know that Waluigi is the best character ever in video games and that he should be in more every video game. But what do you think a Waluigi standalone game would and should look like? Um, there's actually a game out there called 
I think psychic Waluigi that the fan group made where he gives him psychic powers and like has this crazy platforming game. Apparently that game is really good. So platformer again? Probably. Like I mean, He's but it really would be different lanky. because I look at look at the Wario games. Like the the core Wario games are all platforming games as well, but they're all about like treasure collecting. Mhm. Punching. Yeah, and like smashing things and like getting mutilated and changing your forms and stuff like that. So what's the core Luigi game? Is it Mansion? Yeah. Okay. Because that's really, that's with the, the exception weirdest, of like, like Mario is missing, that's really the only game where you could just play as Luigi, unless you count like portions of Mario and Luigi. Okay. So what, like Wario's thing is greed and like stealing. What is Waluigi all about? Um, no one really knows because he only usually shows up in the sports games. But okay. um, I I would joke that he would just kind of try to parody Luigi. Okay. So maybe he's running around like haunting things or like. Do they do kind of like an opposites thing? So like Wario, like Mario's really selfless and Wario's really greedy and Luigi's really scared. So is Waluigi like the boldest dude ever? (laughs) He's like way into skydiving and like that would be kind of cool. Personality is he? He just does not get scared. He's got an oddball personality. I mean, look look at his appearance in like Strikers and Strikers Charge. Like he'll like. He's a well, total he's asshole. Like sneering. He almost seems just like a bad guy. He seems like a 1920s like villain. Really. So what you're saying is he ties up princesses and totally. ties them to like train exactly. tracks. Yeah, and yeah. he probably works yeah. at a carnival or something. Like something. He's a carny. I think that's what he is. That's what we're gonna. That I think that's how I see him now. We have a we have a running joke in uh one of the Runaway Guys our video series that uh, Waluigi actually runs like a bridal boutique. Okay. Like just something okay. completely like out of left field. Right. Just contrasting he's really good at it like it's just yeah that's his passion his passion is really to make people happy but he can't admit it normally okay so it's like a fashion i I think if you made it like a platformer that kind of looked similarly to like the donkey kong country returns games Mm -hmm. i wouldn't mind if it looked like wario land shaker to be honest that cell shaded look was really nice i just want waluigi wear like that huh (laughs) i don't know i just want more of those in whatever I feel way. like Waluigi would just be going around trying to mess with people. I I wouldn't mind a game where you're just Waluigi trying to ruin people's lives. Right. It's like Sneak King, but Waluigi. But I, I feel like Nintendo would never do that because it's negative. Right. Like, I'm surprised they make Wario games half the time. Mm-hmm. And market them so goofily, too. But it's crowd farter. Let's bring it back. <laughs> all right, is that going to do it? It's pretty funny. Crowd farter. Yeah, let's end on I that. I think that's note. all the questions. That was a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for sending Almost those. two hours again. Um, All right, quickly, let's do game of the week. Okay. Mine's trying. Okay. Mine's Street Pass. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I'm gonna go with Call of War as Gunslinger. That was, cool. That was a fun game. All right, and I guess we'll tune back in next time with all of our more Steam sales. Yeah, yeah. the Steam. So sale how long, how long is the Steam sale running? Uh, like, till the twenty second. So it's, oh god, four more Says days the top of this. Left on the main page. Four more days of this. Yep. I also bought Dead All Island. Right. I forgot to mention that earlier. Yes, I already have it. Don't worry I picked about it. up. I picked up Rogue Legacy. There you go. All right. Talk, see you guys next week. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Later. Do-do-do.